Aha. So, Hangout is now live, I believe. Yes. Welcome, everyone. Sorry about the delay. Um, had to run up into Concord and um, grab some shit from my old place and then got sidetracked with some other things. So, yeah, starting about 15 minutes late. It's, you know, praise the format. It's not too not too bad. Um, while I'm waiting, oh, I see Caleb has joined me right now. Hey, Caleb, how you doing? You there? If you're speaking, I can't hear you. Doing all right? Can you hear me now? Oh, there we go. Let me just change this on my end. Oh. Can you hear me? Ah, hey, hey, guys. Hey. Yep. Uh, so, welcome, everyone, to the... Uh, it's called the Speak for Your Die, just as a little play on the New Hampshire license plate thing. Focus today is going to be on the upcoming free speech rally down in Boston, the events which went down in Charlottesville, the connection between the two, where factional craziness and political warfare seems to be in this day and age, and uh, whatever else we begin talking about. Uh, before I introduce my guest, because I saw the question there in the chat, uh, just to give you an idea that uh, the background picture, the thumbnail, that's my default YouTube artwork. It's a, a set photo from Amy in a Cage, uh, Huru, the director's there, myself, that's me in the background with all the light. It was a cool photo. So you guys pretty much all know Vernaculus here. It doesn't require much introduction. Everyone's favorite uh, lemonhead pumpkin guy. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> he's apparently got a fire. Uh, he's got a smoke alarm that's going out. And uh, with us today also is Caleb Dyer. Caleb is actually a, uh, a sitting libertarian state rep. Uh, representing Merrimack, if I'm not mistaken. No, 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 no. No, I'm down. I'm actually in Hillsborough County as well. I'm, uh, I'm down in Pelham. Pelham. Oh, okay. Yeah. So shows how much research I put into the back of this. But yeah, yeah. Caleb's actually a buddy. Yep. So he's actually an elected, a real sitting live elected representative, much like I hope to be, perhaps after next year. Who knows? Um, Caleb actually reached out to me with the idea for this live stream himself saying that he was um well well actually probably best to let him describe it yeah i was um i was just kind of concerned i heard a, a lot of bad things um shaping up around the boston rally of course everyone knows what the hell happened in charlottesville and now so, you've had now you've, now um, you've heard it you know, I think it, some of their organizers oh, yeah. are involved in this one right yeah yeah so there are some people not their faces are not publicized around it but um you know there are some people who were charlottesville attendees who uh were certainly involved with its planning so you know that's um it, it's kind of troubling that the people who are organizing it are sort of lying and trying to obscure oh we're not connected with you know the charlottesville organizers well y you might not be connected with the organizers but you sure as hell you know are friendly to people who are down there you know um so proud boys of course so you're worried you know, there's going to be um, enough overlap to, to to cause some problems. Oh yeah. Now we were talking earlier, and um, and now just for the record too, um, plans as it stands right now. Oh, is every well? I mean, I see. All right, real quick. Uh, Shannon, I can see is having trouble hearing this. You guys have no trouble hearing me, right? No, no, I can uh, hear that. Yeah, I can hear the both of you fine. Um, if anybody else is having audio problems, you can't hear. Let me. Oh, all right. Shannon's back. That's what I get for paying attention to a woman. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, the uh, now so just really quick too, if plans actually work out the way I'm that they're sort of tentatively planned to, uh, Vernaculus and I, as well as a couple other friends, will actually be down in Boston for the event this Saturday to catalog it because as uh, especially after hearing as Caleb here's tell me some word through the grapevine that um. There's plans for some some blood, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, certainly, I, I have some some lefty friends who are sort of in the loop, and um, I haven't heard very many encouraging things. I mean, I I have friends who who are specifically staying away because they know that some really violent people are going to be going, and it's going to be on both sides. I mean, th oh, yeah. there's no question about that. It's like, y you know, what do you do? You, yeah, well, then everyone's really be, everyone will end up fighting over who started it, like a bunch of uh, fifth graders, anyway. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you know, 
it's it's going to be the same same stuff as in Charlottesville. You know, it's um it's unfortunate. Ho- hopefully, it's not nearly as crazy as it was down there. You know, someone got killed. You know, it's like yeah, I I just don't want to see Boston race riots take two. You know, like yeah, I mean, well, frankly, I mean, and I, I think Bernacchio's could definitely attest to this. If you could actually fit a Dodge Charger down the average street in Boston, yeah. <laughs> that itself would be impressive. Yeah. Yeah, it's true, man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, Vern, when did you decide you wanted to go watch this particular potential um, uh, shit show in action? Um, well, I think the day I figured it out, like, that, that it was happening, was either Monday or Tuesday. Oh, this and, uh Yeah. And so I noticed that uh, someone who was a speaker in Charlottesville in Charlottesville, was going to be a speaker at this rally. And who is this? Uh, you know, the, the guy named Augustus Invictus. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So, let, let me tell you, the, the libertarians have a, uh, a good working knowledge of Mr. Invictus. Yeah. <laughs> now, when you say that, now, here's a couple of things worth clarifying, too, for those who, like, who either may not be in the States or may not be in New England. Um, the New Hampshire Libertarian Party and movement itself much like the rest of New Hampshire politics compared to the rest of the nation in general, is kind of a different animal, right? Oh, entirely. Yeah. yeah. What, what would, it, so, you can't so, even compare it. What would you say, I mean, if, if you were going to contrast the two, what would you say, like, the, the most glaring sort of differences might be? Um, so the National Party is basically a loose conglomerate. Um, it, it's kind of like a confederation. It's not very centralized at all. So the state parties are really where everything happens. Um, New Hampshire libertarians have obviously not really had any electoral success. We're hoping to change that, of course. The small L libertarians have had oodles of electoral success. I mean, there are people who would otherwise be libertarians holding office as Republicans and Democrats right now. Uh, in the state house, so the, the, about ten percent of the New Hampshire House of Representatives is held by people who would otherwise be libertarians. So it's it's very hard to explain to people who are not in the know in New Hampshire, but it's you know it's just how it is. Um, you know, so I, the, I, I don't really know how to give like a more um, a, a better explanation. You know, well, than, well, I mean, so would you say that? Um... Wow, oh my god, this stream is actually getting ads, fellas. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> oh no. Hey, uh, oh, fuck, I'll take him and thank you. And thank you, Sergeant Buff, for whitelisting my channel here. Um, uh, so, I mean, would you say then that like the New Hampshire Libertarian Party perhaps isn't well represented by, let's say, uh, that guy T's um, blanket anti state, maybe we should be friends with fascists? Oh god, why did I say that kind of thing? Um, <laughs> So, yeah, no, we're, we're definitely not maybe we should be friends with fascist type people. Um, but there, I, I'll tell you this, there are certainly quite a few anti-status folks in the NHLP. Uh, actually, LPNH, but it doesn't matter. What, um, well, it's, it's been a funny thing to observe, too. I mean, my own time working in New Hampshire politics. And granted, since I basically left the field, the shit's evolved even since then. But I do, you know, I do recall always encountering both numbers of Democrats and Republicans, like you said, who effectively were, it almost seems like in New Hampshire, libertarianism, small L libertarianism is, yeah. uh, it's central to the politics through and through. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I, when you, when you can't get a gubernatorial candidate who is a Democrat to win an election, if they take a position in favor of a sales or income tax, you, you know, you've got something, you know, different. Um, I, I don't even like to say that libertarianism runs deep in New Hampshire. I, I like to say that it's more so classical liberalism because you'll find that, you know, it's not so much, it's not well, so I, much that. Yeah, that depends. Libertarian that, well, that also depends on whose definitions you're working with. Cause I mean, you could go from like Sargon to, to, to David Pakman and you'll yeah, get overlap. Yeah, no, no, no. In, indeed. And, and I would say that, you know, there are people who are like Sargon, liberals, you know, out by the seacoast, you know, who just kind of like, leave me alone. Um, you know, just let me live my life. Um, you know, there are a lot of those kind of liberals in New Hampshire. And I, I think that's a good thing. I, I, I'm encouraged by the state of affairs in New Hampshire. I think it's, it's just distinctively different than a lot of other places. And 
that's one of the reasons why I got involved, at least. So, well, let's let's bring it back around too. Um, also, because I mean, like the center focus of this really does it is focused largely on this free speech rally, which it, it's the one thing. Actually, I mentioned it to my friend when we were driving up to get the the the, the shit I needed from my brother's house about how um, it does seem as though this you know emerging fashy alt right right these people and even the numbers of them who who love using the fascia as their logo and they're oh so edgy um <laughs> yeah well these kids it, it's funny because we're always drawing parallels between them and social justice warriors and it's not that hard and i'm noticing that in the same way that those people have taken we stand for equality and we stand for anti-racism all of this all of their taglines when you hear the alt right using free speech as, as as almost like a rhetorical weapon rather than an actual fundamental principle, it does sound as though it's kind of boiling up and to be this to be the same way. You know, I've seen um, I've seen multiple people who would consider themselves alt right uh, outright state that uh, they support free speech for tactical purposes, well, and I not mean, like so. Well, I mean, imagine <laughs> my shock. Yeah. Yeah, Burn. color you surprised, right? Yeah, just just color no, me yeah. in a nice a nice uh, beige shade of surprised here. Yeah, but I um, I I wouldn't be shocked to uh, to find out that a lot of these speeches that are going to be going on at this free speech rally will I either pay very little lip service to it or just not mention it at all. Well, you're I mean you're you because... live in Ma you well you live in the heart of Massachusetts. Um, and I'm I'm kind of curious to know because so let's take uh, two two examples of the free speech rallies that have gone on thus far, the big ones that everyone got attention. There was the one out in Portland, which was well documented by Tim Pool, in which out there I mean, and it's Portland, Oregon, so naturally it's a different environment. And out there, many of the people who were free, you know, on the free speech side of things, said, yeah, there there are you know there are white white nationalists and. And the like here, but they're you know a small minority, and we've told them we're not here for that, and we we don't support their message. Then you get Charlottesville, which while they called it a free speech, you know they didn't even call it a free speech rally. It was just was it was unite the right, yeah, it was unite the right, yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah. mean they've they've you know they weren't even trying to pretend what they were about there. Now I have to wonder if. I mean, what do you think? What do you think the what, what kind of white nationalist sentiment do you think exists within Massachusetts? Within Massachusetts, uh, I mean, do you think do you think there's going outside of you know out of state people, which any New Englander will tell you when there's something going on that is centered on the state, be it Mass, Vermont, New Hampshire, or Maine, and out of state people show up and try and speak on behalf of those people. Oh, no yeah. one in that area. The xenophobia is real, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, if you're not <laughs> from New England, you might as well fuck right off to Canada. I mean, yeah. that's the yeah, opinion. Right. <laughs> well, um, to be honest, I don't think I've, I've met a, a single, like, white nationalist, white supremacist person in Massachusetts. It is a very liberal like, state. Yeah, so I'm not sure what the numbers are going to look like. What's well, kind of curious? I mean, they've they've had they've had some smaller events in Boston, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there was one I tried to go to. Um, I think it was a I don't know a month to a couple months ago, but uh, the MBTA was late. So I'm, I, 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 I I know I, 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 <laughs> what missed, a surprise. I, I, I know I missed the entire thing and I was so pissed off. But I, I was I was trying to go there at, uh, at one point. I ended up talking to one person who said that there was, uh, I think there were like three or four arrests, but uh, there there wasn't much violence to go around. Yeah, so I'm not no, sure how I, this I, one is going to be, especially after Charlottesville, because there are going yeah. to be people there who, you know, are neurotics and want revenge. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, this, I mean, that, that actually works out nice, because so I was talking with Caleb earlier, and as he said, he's got friends who were still you know, hard left, and they're still sympathetic to Antifa, let's say. Um, and apparently, at least from what's being said, after Charlottesville, these fuckers may be out for blood. Uh, is that, yeah, like, yeah. it's scary, man. Like, 
the identitarian stuff runs deep. I don't really understand it myself, but like, like, you know, Ugh. well, I mean, yeah, well, so, I mean, well, I mean, do you, do you, I mean, do you mind going into some of what it is you've heard? Oh, just, I mean, like I, I told you in DMS, you know, like yeah. concrete water bottles, you know, all the standard stuff, of course, but I mean, we're, we're talking knives. We're talking like improvised trash can explosives and shit. I mean, like, gotta get those trash cans. Out. Out. No, they're taking the war against garbage collection to a whole new level. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I mean, I mean g- garbage loves company. Well, from from what you've heard, I mean, and again, this is just you know, sort of off the top of your head. But if you had to slap like a, a percentile chance, what do you think the odds of a violence and b a fatality might be? Fatality? I'd say it's probably certainly not as high as violence. I mean, violence... I mean, violence. if the wrong thing gets said at the wrong time, I mean, you're going to have violence, and the chances of that are pretty much 100%. Yeah, I mean, violence, there's going to be true. some violence. Uh, death? I I probably wouldn't put it super high, but I mean, you know, people want revenge. What the hell? You know, it's like you have to be prepared for it at the very least. Yeah, so that's so, why I'm not going. <laughs> yeah, so you'd um, so you'd say that violence is practically inevitable. But yeah, violence is and, practically and 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 a, 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 fa- a fatality would be a distinct possibility, but not definite. You'd say. Yeah, it's it's certainly not definite. I mean, put it this way, you're you're in a really great spot if you don't get a fatality out of this one. <laughs> Okay, so you're putting, okay. you putting might, you might say like um, I mean would you say maybe like sixty percent chance? Because let's be honest, no, these no, people. No, if, I feel like I feel like it's kind of difficult yeah. to to give. Yeah, like, it's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm only thinking like I mean, do you think sort of ballpark I mean, violence, here? Violence is going to be a certainty. And mm. you know, this, which is no, de- definitely, definitely lower than a than a coin toss, my friend. Yeah, I'm just wondering too because I mean, if the thing is after after an intentional act took the life of a counter protester in Charlottesville as it did. And now and I mean we've already seen Antifa likes playing with homemade explosives, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it really does. I mean, it, it the whole thing is really coming to this point in which we're kind of forced not so much to wonder if um outright, you know, aggressive warfare of that of that sort is going to happen, but when cuz yeah, it, it's it's coming to a boiling point. I mean, if if not Boston, sometime down the road. Well, the hell, know, it could be just the West Coast. I mean, the anti fur out there is even more crazy, you know, and certainly well, if the white nationalists go out that way. What I've know. been seeing is that this, this event in Boston on Saturday is one of, I think, like seven or eight of them that's going on around the country. There's going to be there's going to be rallies like this, I believe, in Austin and Dallas. I think there's Shit. one in Seattle, and I'm pretty sure we'll see... A whole lot of violence in Seattle, because oh yeah, yes, Seattle's going to be a doozy for yeah, sure. Seattle, I mean, Seattle's going to be a doozy. Boston is a violent, can be a violent town on its own for just whether or not the Yankees are in town. So I have yeah. to wonder. We, we we beat the shit out of each other for fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is kind of the way it goes. Oh god. Now, I mean, from your, I mean, from from you guys' perspectives. I mean, everyone's got their own opinion. Everyone's got their own take. Everyone's very certain of it. Uh, a lot of people are saying that the the emergence of the alt right, the white nationalist set, and all um, that this is itself sort of it, it's purely a response to social justice. Other people, like myself, are of the opinion that like these fuckers have basically just been quietly waiting in the wings, waiting for racism to become remotely fashionable. So they could step forward and say, "Oh yeah, I've been a racist the whole time." And <laughs> uh, what? What do you? How uh, do you think I, I honestly, here? I I have I have no freaking clue. Um, I mean, I know, I know that you know there are people up here in New Hampshire like um friggin' Chris Cantwell who Vice News did a um did their expose on. I don't know if you guys watched the Vice News um, piece on Charlottesville. Did you? Um, I haven't seen. I can't myself. say that I have. I, no, well, Vice, definitely go I watch don't, it. I don't really flock to Vice typically, but I know a <laughs> oh, broken oh, clock, a broken yeah, analog clock, can be right I don't today. 
Yeah, right. I mean, I don't flock to Vice either, but I mean, they did a an expose on uh, Chris Cantwell, who actually lives in Keene, New Hampshire. So he's not far away at all. That is and a bold is, place for an alt writer to live. I mean, yeah, they're right. dangerous out there, but that place is, it's a fucking hippie commune, the entire town. Yeah, pretty much. But anyhow, so he, he lives basically in the center of Keene. Um, <laughs> and he was down in Charlottesville, and he's a white nationalist. I mean, he's not even just alt-right. He's a white nationalist, like straight up. Um, you know, and he was doing this Vice News uh, expose, and he's basically just talking about how um, he, he was very honest in how it was just a reactionary kind of political movement. I mean, he he formerly identified as a libertarian. I mean, he was actually kicked out of uh, Free State Project events because, you know, libertarians couldn't even deal with him. Like, they couldn't even tolerate his views anymore. Um, if that gives you any kind of in indication of who he is. But, oh, that's, um, yeah, that's... Um... I mean, when, when, when the Free State <laughs> Project can no longer tolerate your views, that's... Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, in, in, anyhow, so Chris Cantwell got basically ousted and banned from Porkfest and Liberty Forum and all that shit. Um, but on this, this interview with Vice News, I mean, he's very clearly laying it out. And if you haven't watched it yet, you it's it's deserving. Like, you really watch, need to. Definitely. Because he very clearly lays out his reactionary political stances. He very clearly lays out the white identitarianism that's kind of, um, you know, he certainly supports and he, you know, s tries to spread. So I don't know where it started, but I certainly know that um, it definitely started before Trump and it's going to continue, you know, probably after he's out. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of divorced from all of the political happenings, like the actual um, policy making. It, it's not, real it's not really as connected. Like, yeah. I mean, the people on the left and I, you know, I don't want to say, Oh, those damn lefties, but people on the left are, you know, will say, Oh, Trump is, you know, a white nationalist or X, Y, Z. And they'll, they'll say he's a racist and whatever. Even if it's true, he's not in office you know, making policy decisions from that kind of framework. He's just in office, you know, and if one of his constituencies happen to be um, white nationalists, that's just a side effect for him. He doesn't give a shit. You know, all he gives a shit is that he's in the office. Um, you know, so I, I think that explains more so what's going on in the political side. In terms of how everything sprang to be, I really can't even answer that question because I haven't looked into it as much as I probably should have. But well, now we're gonna have to. So. Let me throw this to let me throw this to Vern because I mean you've been you've been in this culture war as long as I have. <laughs> um, but I mean also it, it's funny because I mean well then this is primarily to you, Vern. Um, it's funny. Uh, I often heard Milo used to quote, Paul, you know Andrew Breitbart." But politics mm -hmm. exists downstream from culture. It's funny though because it really does seem if if we're going to take the last couple of years of what we've seen and all of a sudden all of a sudden we see media catches on eventually to what it is we've been seeing, right? And we're like, well, yeah, we've been saying that for years. It does seem <laughs> as though culture exists downstream. Uh, more, more to say with me here. Um, it does. It does seem. <laughs> It seems as though culture, though, itself largely kind of exists downstream from subculture, which the Internet seems to have a pretty good bead on. I mean, what have been your observations with this? I mean, have these people sprung out because people like us gave them an opening in our fight against social justice or what? Um... I mean, I mean, it's interesting to think about, but uh, I, I'm, I'm sure everyone in the alt-right, and the alt-right is identitarian by by nature i think that they all have their various motivations like i, th I think people like uh, like uh, richard spencer for example i feel like he really um he he seized an opportunity for his rhetoric to be true do you know what i mean yeah because there were sort of uh mumblings about uh like uh there were mumblings within uh various sort of white identitarian groups a while ago about like and they were saying the exact same things that they are now 
But reality is caught up with them, I think. In the sense that reality, um, it mirrors their rhetoric as opposed to their rhetoric mirroring reality. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, sort, of, sort of like, you know, um, like, for example, in the 1960s, right, with the civil rights movement, right, if you had someone walking around saying, you know, white identity is under attack, right, they'd be insane, they'd be ridiculous, right? But if you say that in, in... the civil rights movement? Well, I mean, if you're dealing with King. Oh, I mean, if, well, if you're dealing with King and the people who were following King, but if you were on the, you know, if you were following people who were on the side opposed to that. Oh, and Caleb, if that's not well, your... like the Malcolm X's? Yeah, no, no, no. Well, no, I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking more the, uh, you know, the actual, like, white supremacists at the time, the kind of people who protested school integration, right? Well, no, no, no. What I'm saying is that those people, like with uh, with integration, would say that whites are under attack, right? Mm. At least that, that, that's what their rhetoric would say. Right? Yeah, you say that, right? But now, they 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 have a case for that at this point. Oh, so you're saying you that? You know what I mean? Yeah, the argument itself, because it has devolved into the the the, the argument has stayed the same, but re but reality's morphed around it. I could see that. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it, it's, it's difficult when you're discussing motivations, too. Yeah, I mean, especially because they're disparate. I mean, for instance, yeah. like an, uh, an 18 or 19 year old guy, right, who, uh, who takes to this alt right white identitarianism, it might not be the same sort of modus, you know, modus operandi of some of the higher level people. Because honestly, I'm, I'm, they have to, I mean, honestly, I, I believe they're largely delusional if they, genuinely believe like white surrender attack and there's a white genocide going on i have a feeling like especially with the duplicitous nature of a lot of the more prominent people in the alt-right who mm -hmm. you know who've been caught openly saying in their own circles oh well we'll say this one thing in public because it plays well but in mm -hmm. private this is what we really mean that it does when you look to someone like spencer or or or, or woes per se right um that you do get this this impression that this is because they're so eager to lord this like oh I got a bell curve study that shows that whites are on average smarter than others right mm -hmm. for them to turn around and say that uh, oh this is a uh, oh no no we're defending white identity we're not attacking anybody else that's that's, that's, that's political that's a matter of political optics whereas mm -hmm. you know when when you can frame it like this so that young guy who comes on and all you know he goes online and he sees oh white people are fucking terrible i can't wait till whiteness is exterminated and all that other shit yeah which it, do you think it's fair to say it's that's a that's a that is itself a fringe minority that's been given a platform by a bunch of uh lefty edge tards in publishing well, these <laughs> These kids hear this shit and they're like, oh, well, fuck yeah. I mean, clearly, like, he's saying white identity is under attack and they're saying white identity needs to die. Uh, he sounds right. Whereas that guy who's saying, oh, there's a white genocide on, it's just, that's just window dressing, really, for I think, I, I think, supremacy. I think the average person has uh, Dr. King's views on this. Sort of, you shouldn't judge people by race, but by the content of their character. I think if you ask the average person, you know, get offline, go outside, and ask and ask the average person, I think they'll say that race is not a huge factor to them. Yeah, it's culture. Yeah, but I I, I think you're right in the sense that there are people who are on the uh, you know attack whiteness, you know, you know that 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 spectrum who have been given a platform but these white nationalist types they don't have the sort of access that they have well it's been it's, mm. it's effectively yeah i mean it's effectively like a tale of two narratives you've got i mean you've got these two narratives which are equally despicable one which um in a in a sort of cloak you know in a sort of uh, convoluted way is pushing for a, basically a supremacist separatist narrative but they're doing so under the guises of we have no choice, we're under attack. And if we know one thing about identitarianism, it adores victimhood. Yeah. They're trying to eschew their agency here. Yeah, and it's I, I I don't think that we can say uh groups like Antifa are like uh completely 
let's say, bl blameless in this scenario, right? Mm. They've been incubating this political violence for a long time. But it, w I, I also think it's incorrect to say that these white nationalists, you know, they, they, they have no agency, and they can't, oh, yeah. you know, they, 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 they just, they just can't help but, you know, be. Oh insane. yeah, it's total bullshit. You know? It's total bullshit. So. I mean, control themselves. I mean, they can control the reactions. You know, like yeah. So uh, if, essentially, my opinion on this comes down to both of them need to grow the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, but I mean, like we say, grow the fuck up, and that's almost like when I when I hear that, though, in my eyes, that almost gives them too much credit, saying that like their actions are not uh, calculated in any sense. That it's uh, it's not necessarily that, for instance, like when. Um, you know, when when the alt right gets attacked by Antifa and they turn around and try and use that as like, oh, listen, this is the only reason we're doing all of this shit. It's because the leftists, you know, that, that that's that's exploiting a victim narrative like anybody else. And then yeah, as, I mean, time, as I've as I've said before, yeah. both of these are they're they're it's a closed circuit human centipede. They just yep. they, they feed <laughs> off of each other and they yep. justify each other's existence this way. Indeed. Hundred percent. It's good to hear you guys talk back <laughs> for for a minute. There, it did kind of sound like, wow, these guys have a similar voice. Did I invite <laughs> the same guy with two different internet <laughs> connections? On? Um, it's a we're, we're it's in stereo. But yeah, I mean, so we've got, yeah, but I mean, with Antifa even too, and this is one of this is one of the sick things because just in the same way, for instance, that that. Um, effectively like no nothing young guy all you know he gets his politics from the internet right great way um and he hey, i get my politics from the internet and i hold a political office yeah oh my God. <laughs> we'll get into that just <laughs> wait your turn um but no I mean, with this though so you i mean so we've got you know we've got on the uh, really on both sides because the one thing you can always count on radical revolutionaries especially when they're young is that they're just dumb and that they've been sort of swept up in this romantic, self-righteous sense of cause and crusade by the leaders who sit atop these things. But with this, I mean, so you've got, you know, so you've got the outright saying, you know, the rise of Antifa and anti-whiteness is cause enough to join us and join us. And, oh, look at the violence that's against us. We're peaceful. We only defend ourselves. And then you've got Antifa saying that they're fighting some big, grand, you know, imperial fucking legion of some kind like they're, they're fighting the actual empire and um that that you know laying yourself on the line and committing violence in the act of freeing the proletariat it's 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 consistently hijacking almost the naivete of people who really want to believe in something but don't have any solid reason or cause to give themselves over to something until they're until they're shown if you don't believe us they want to kill you Am I wrong in that? Uh, I mean, I, I I don't have much to add. Well, I mean, where yeah, are we going? No, I mean, that's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, 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 where, where do we go with this though? Because here's one thing: a common thing we hear is people comparing this to, like, you know, the years of lead. We're saying we're heading into our own factional warfare, and I, I for one, honestly do believe within the next year we're going to see a targeted assassination or a bombing. I, I think that I think that's in the cards, yeah. unfortunately. I mean, either either it, that or it's going to look like like gang warfare, like, yeah, like Bloods much. and Crips style gang warfare. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, it's just as with Bloods and Crips, there's an identitarian thing going on there. You know, it's like the Bloods have you know their in group, and the Crips have their in group, and it's actually it's kind of the same in politics. Believe it or not, the Republicans have their in group. The Democrats oh, yeah, they, have they their in group. By the way, they don't like you much, do they? they fucking hate me. <laughs> well, I mean, what was it you were um, uh, you were you were being uh, uh, smeared by the state GOP for a while, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, like it, it didn't didn't last very long. But yeah, they um, you know they, they realized that no one gives a shit about some twenty one year old you know um, kid who happened to get elected and. You know, they just don't want to attract more attention than necessary to it. But, you know, it doesn't mean that I'm not a thorn in their side. Of course, they don't like me. But with this, I mean, with this with this rising violence we're seeing and the fact that, I mean, and I, I really do 
for me at least saturday is going to basically prove to be a hallmark like what to expect going forward are we going to see you know are we going to see like clashes that almost come to violence not you know but don't really go that extra step are we going to end up seeing just increased violence i'm kind of on the side of we're going to see things get a whole lot worse yeah. as they go forward yeah well, I, I i think it depends on whether the police start taking these rallies seriously but that was kind of yeah. that, was, that was kind of the point i wanted to move into though um okay because as things go forward if if they unless they take a radical turn for like uh, reasoned mature discussion and debate that will not happen which will not happen um <laughs> the, what, what i keep and caleb does have a twitter by the way caleb if you want to drop your twitter into the uh into the chat there go ahead people could follow eh, you there. i don't even use it man well, get like, used to it, but, Mr. Political Guy, because if there's one thing well, that the highest office in the uh, has taught us is that all policy decisions go through Twitter. But, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But no, with, with this, though, I mean, the only real outcome I see is a, a, a bigger police and surveillance state. And that's honestly because, I mean, you know, so like in Europe, you had the years of lead where extreme right and left wing factions were in open warfare in the streets but we've already got a security and surveillance establishment here in the u.s thanks to 9 11 and everyone's come you know just complicit attitude towards being watched and monitored now we've also got google which is the you know it is the fucking internet effectively they've kind of chosen a side in that sense but at the same time if the security apparatus begins monitoring uh, domestic political activism uh, for fears of domestic terrorism, which this will could become, how long until Google yeah, starts deciding? Oh, I mean, it. I mean, it, well, it, no. It, you, you can say it has. You can say it has, but at the same time, I'm talking more overt. I'm talking bombings. I'm talking. Uh, I'm talking shootings, uh, targeted assassinations, these sorts of things. Years of lead style shit. But even before we get to that, the kind of enhanced security and police apparatus especially because keep in mind for everyone's talk about how oh trump's a white supremacist sympathize all this shit the more concerning thing is his law and order stance because if you have a law and order stance in a time of terrorism and political uncertainty you almost always end up with a surveillance state that makes london look like a, a private uh, a private party <laughs> yeah no that's uh it's not too far off i mean like i i've i don't understand the the law and order kind of of stance i i just don't i mean i'm not particularly anti-police but really not pro-police i mean just the other day i had a uh i had a fun time with the uh the pelham pd uh they gave me a summons to appear in court uh, for supposedly unauthorized use of firearms. I was just shooting in my friend's backyard. But, like, I mean, they just pretty and declared, oh, you're doing this unsafely. Um, Were you within 200 yards of another us, residence? No, not too. Well, it's not 200. It's actually 100 yards. It's 300 feet or something like that. They cited oh. us the state law, but, oh, with, you know, we were well outside of that area anyhow but i mean it's, it's totally relevant i i'm not pro police i'm not anti-police i'm fairly ambivalent i don't like the use of state force um so the whole law and order kind of concept is kind of foreign to me um i, I just think that you know if people are hurting other people, then there is a place for anyone, whether it be law enforcement or just a private person, to step in and stop that violence, whether it's, you know, through force itself or, you know, whether they just try to that person or however they do it. I mean, and, and if it's police, fine. If it's some other person, fine. But, you know, the problem with that is when you have some other random person, if it's like an Antifa person trying to subdue someone who's a white nationalist, then you're just going to have the gang violence take over. And if you just have the police, you know, step in the middle of it, it's not like you're just introducing a third gang is all it is. You're just introducing a third entity. That's all it is. Like, 
it's it's not going to solve anything to just have these have police crackdowns and these riots. It's just going to introduce a third gang. And now all of a sudden you have, you know, the state getting involved and that's just going to be real ugly. Like, I don't know how else to say it, but. I can, I can understand that. My respect, I mean, like my respect for police and, and law and order itself really does come from the more classic liberal, I guess. Um, position on the function of law you know without the law it's you know we have anarchy you know it, it's it's a great thing i love too because it's always a fun part with the the real more diehard and cap libertarians to discuss this it's that um you know oh the nap oh but you don't believe in a social contract okay <laughs> um <laughs> I, I mean start, i'm i'm not circle back around to that big, yeah i mean i'm not a big believer in the social contract i I mean, I'm not, I'm certainly not like a that guy T and cap, um, but I'm certainly damn, I, I mean, I'm not, I, I hate to like label myself in that way because I, I don't agree with everything that that guy T says. I agree with some of it, but like, you know, I'm my own person at the end of the day. Like, yeah. you know, I, I have yeah. to go in and do my job as a legislator and, you know, I'm going to vote the way that I vote and I'm going to try to do it in the interests of individualism and, well, you know, my, 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 my concept of it though, really is, it really has more to do with, and, and that was just, that was just a cheap jab at, at, at uh, you know, <laughs> fundamental libertarian theory because it's easy and fun. Oh, thanks. Thanks, yeah. sweetie. You're welcome. <laughs> but, um, but no, I mean, with that though, I mean like my central, like my, my point with policing has always been that the move away from community oriented, you know, brass button officer friendly. And I know it sounds like antiquated, but it worked at one time. And then we got rid of that and replaced it with a more militarized, more centralized um, form of policing, which, you know, took away police discretion. So like maybe you don't need to arrest the kid for the dime bag you know you just let his mom know and realize you've done worse to him than you could do prosecuting him uh, but it, it, we moved away from that to a point where they act more like city guards in games like fall or uh, games like skyrim in a sense <laughs> they, they fucking kill you <laughs> yeah, they, well, yeah they, well they exist they exist not to maintain order and peace but they exist to protect the property and lifestyle of certain peoples over others so in places like washington dc the cops main focus whether it's stated or not is to keep people from places like anacostia and bradbury heights out of like the uh dupont circle area right and it's not they don't you know they barely patrol they never respond to calls on time there's no substation no one knows who the officers are and there's a snitches get stitches attitude which evolved as police and the communities they police were separated now with that that's the kind of thing where i could see okay i understand not liking cops because now they are purely agents of state authority and state authority is typically oriented more towards protecting vested usually financially affluent interests over community stability but with all of that though um, you know, this this entire thing about, you know, militarizing and centralizing police and turning them to forceful arms of a central authority as opposed to community uh, peacekeepers feeds this is, is fed when radical nut jobs such as Antifa or the alt right, you know, in, in I say radical nut jobs because their ideologies are fundamentally flawed to a point of not of being completely irredeemable to where their actions will make protest and public speech themselves more difficult and that we'll yeah, all be under yeah. surveillance to make sure that none of us are <laughs> uh you know endangered of being radicalized i mean in it in situations like this when you have two groups like antifa and whoever's going to be at the free speech rally I think all the police really need to do is, at least to prevent as much violence as they can, is get, first off, get in riot gear, and second, just keep keep the groups separated, right? Because you've got Antifa saying, oh, you know, oh, we're just there to counter protest against racists, and then you have the other group who's saying, oh, we're just here to 
promote free speech and freedom of expression, right? So if you get the police there, if you get some sort of blockade, if you build a wall between <laughs> <laughs> between oh, Antifa, yeah, <laughs> if you build a wall between Antifa and this group, they will need to stick by what they've claimed they're there for. Yeah, until, I think that could be useful. Well, until things get hurled over police lines from the back of a given line, but then here's here's the, then that question gets fucked up because if you've got some random uh, family dollar ninja in, in in you know in a herd of antifa, and he decides to lob a fucking concrete filled water bottle, a glass bottle filled with concrete, across and over the line into the other side. Do the police hold the entirety of the group accountable for that? Do they go searching and hunting for the guy who threw the bottle who they'll never find? Do they disperse everyone because violence is about to break out? And if that's the case, and if it gets to be that way, then doesn't that mean that any agent provocateur of whatever stripe you can imagine, all they need to do is hurl a brick or a bottle in one direction, and that's the end of public demonstration? Well, I'm not sure what you do if somebody throws something. I mean, I'm not, I'm not an expert in law enforcement, <laughs> but yeah. I, I, I do think that they need to focus on in the main, like their main goal needs to be to keep these groups separate, physically separate from one another. I, I'm not sure how you do that with yeah, project, I mean, they, projectiles. But. Presumably, they'll just set up a barrier around the rally, which is like like I was telling Vern before this um, the stream started. Basically where the rally is going to be held, they're holding it at like the southern kind of corner of the common. It's honestly the shittiest place they could have chosen to hold the rally. Yeah, it's literally the, the shitty. If that's by, wait a second, that's like, that's, that's like, close to like Tremont China. Street, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, like, Tremont like China Street facing, yeah, that's facing towards Chinatown. That's yeah, a bad place. Much. I've it, been, I've been there with, I've been there with fucking Occupy rallies before. That's a terrible place. Yeah, it's a shit place. And Antifa, as they have actually stated on their Facebook page, they plan to just come marching down from the north, from where, you know, Beacon Hill is, where the state house is. And they're going to take the high ground. And if the police don't have a barrier between the high ground and the low ground on the common, you're just going to have a bunch of, like, Antifa commie LARPers who are just going to run down the hill and just, like, trash a bunch of people. Oh, I mean... Yeah, I hadn't even thought like, of it before, but that no, but that entire area. Anybody, and and if you guys aren't familiar, if you guys in the chat aren't familiar, there's a meme, a great old meme. It's got two photos: one of New York City, one of Boston, and New York shows an <laughs> orderly grid, and it's <laughs> New York because we like to know where we're going. Boston, because fuck you. And it's I describe Boston you. as, yeah, Boston city planning basically was a handful of guys walking around in an open patch of land, letting a goat just wander around however it feels. And they just put in little yardsticks down. And then once he'd gone a couple miles, they'd be like, all right, perfect. That's a road. It'll be one way, halfway, and then one way, the <laughs> other way here. And there was just, you know what? Let's make it, uh, let's make it seven feet wide. No more. Seven Cause feet. Because why not? And we're gonna put uh, we're gonna put parallel parking, street parking on one side. And here's the thing. Oh god, this is fucking terrifying. The more I think about it, any other city you've seen this in Charlottesville, uh, Portland, Seattle, any of these cities, these are all grid cities. In Boston, if you're taking an area like Boston Common and you want to set up any kind of perimeter whatsoever, and I'm thinking from a police perspective here, you're shit out of luck. You are shit out of luck. <laughs> You've got you've got yeah. two or three subway stations you need to close down. You've got at least forty different streets for a three block radius that you'd need to actually close outright if you wanted any control of that area whatsoever. If they get separated and they're not allowed to come down from the north, they're just gonna swing around from the west to the east or even the south, because everywhere in Boston takes about a half an hour of tops to walk. Oh, this is gonna be bad. <clears throat> Yeah, Vern, no, I, like, like, it's not, it's not look, looking good. I mean, bring you, bring, this, bring your running shoes. Why I'm not going. Yeah. This is a hundred percent why I'm not going because this, not is, why I have to go. I, this is why I have. Yeah, to. I have. Yeah, oh, shut up. You don't have to go. I mean, you, like, like I, I, I told Vern. I mean, basically, the best place to be is as actually you just pointed out, coming in from the west. I mean, because at least you have the garden to fall back to. You know that that. Um, the Boston Garden there, that uh, place with the Swan Park and shit. 
Oh, you know, and this, the giant super mutant that comes out of the lake. Wait. Oh, no, that's Fallout. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, well, anyhow, that, that, that park with the, um, with the big pond in the middle of it. Like, that's the only place that you're going to get cover if shit goes real bad. Like, that's it. And at least from that part of the park, you'll be able to see up Beacon Street to see if, like, the Antifa guys are coming down the hill. And you'll at least still be able to see where the rally is going to be held. So, at least from that area, you kind of have, like, a vantage point of everything. But that's about as best it's getting. Like, <laughs> that's, and that's even not an ideal area to be. Because if they block off the state house area, the police that is, then where are the Antifa guys going to go? They're just going to go west. <laughs> like it's going to wrap around. My biggest hope really is that these end up being a bunch of like um, Cambridge commies instead of the <laughs> real gutter punk Antifa we see. Because the gutter punk Antifa, those are the ones who will get in some shit. If there's one thing I know about Cambridge commies, like they're scared yeah. of their own shadows. N- no, no. So I, I am. I mean, you're going to have your Cambridge commies. I mean, Cambridge is its own people's republic. Like, it, yeah. it might as well be in outer space. I mean, like, ah, oh, Jesus. But anyhow, like, I'm sure you're going to actually have, you know, violent radicals who are not from Massachusetts. You know, I mean, so I don't I don't even know what to say anymore. <laughs> like, no, it's just swear, it's it's a bad situation. Just I'm don't happy. go. I'm I no ooh, have to go have to go. I'm halfway expecting though of seeing some of my old uh, lefty New Hampshire comrades down there, and I swear to Christ they'll be like Matt. <laughs> you don't fool with that fucking bandana, Matt. The fuck you doing here? <laughs> of course, then then it'll, then 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 the Just gang berate them all by name. Yeah, well then the gang behind them will notice, and I'll be like, oh shit, everyone run. Yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> Start booking it. Yeah, yeah, right. No, it would be great. <laughs> but, I mean, there there need to be there, there needs to be some non identitarian quote unquote boots on the ground there, I think. And that's why I sort of feel a responsibility to go as well. Oh, that won't. Am have... I roboting by the way? Slightly. Yeah. All right. I'm going to uh, I'm going to hit F5 real quick. You guys carry on for just a moment. I'll be right back. Okay. okay. Well, yeah. Anyhow, so um, Vern, jeez, uh, yeah. stay safe, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, 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 absolutely. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm, de- I'm decent at keeping a a low profile, but I'll, I'll I'll have my pen, I'll have my notepad, I'll have my last will and testament. So, oh yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm uh, I'm all ready to go. Yeah. No, this is I'll the, tell you, uh, if this I went, I, the closest I would... I'm gonna. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, if I went, I would get fucking beaten. I mean, you know, if there's one thing that Antifa folks definitely don't like, it's uh, it's the libertarians, man. Like, they just yeah. think that we're just straight-up Nazis, you know? like. Well, they think everyone is straight-up Nazis, yeah. let's be fair. Yeah, that's true, but I, eh, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean well, here's the thing. I, get, I have actually been recognized here in, in Manchester about four or five times now. And really? that's, oh, yeah, no, it's been pretty cool. Um. But then I'm thinking, like, okay, Boston, let's see. I did piss them off a couple months ago with that Occupy.com article. But at the same time, most of them are millennials, so they probably have an attention span that's worse than mine. (laughs) So, like, maybe they'll be like, you kind of look like fucking, you look like a strung out Ethan Hawk. Like, that's all I am. Never (laughs) Didn't, uh, Didn't one of them accuse you of being a cop at one point? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was great. Oh, yeah. So, um, you, you, you look you, like you a five. Oh, dude, no, I don't know if you saw that. So, like, uh, I I used to. His write hair is clearly a, regulation. Oh yeah, it's like I'm fucking. I'm straight up <laughs> fucking Serpico here, guy. I mean, seriously, come on. Hey man, Keanu Reeves in that that fucking surfer movie, right? Like where he had that long hair and shit, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so right. Like, I'm basically I'm basically Paul Walker from uh, Fast and the Furious uh, One. Because I'm still alive. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. No, I'm gonna roll that one back. Too um, soon. <laughs> too soon. Too soon. <laughs> Man, I ran it. I, I just, you know what I did? I just, I wasn't watching my corners, and I just went into that joke too fast. 
All right, I'm digging a hole here. Uh, yeah, all right, let's 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 drift away from that one. <laughs> let's drift away from that one before we wrap our our port our, our <laughs> port of a stream around the uh, the lamp post of. Uh, all right, are, 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 are we done? Are we done with this metaphor now? I think I got at least one more. <laughs> Hold on. Um, all right. Okay, but uh, hit me with it. Well, no, my my thinking is honestly though. I mean. Between two of us, your channel's better known, but my face is better known. So, like, someone's like, "Wait a oh, second. Yes. I, I, I haven't been recognized once. But you're not exactly so, like a cam a horn. Tragedy, type. No, that's true. Like, hey, hey, bros. <laughs> no, no, but, yeah. Hey, bros. What it be? What it do, y'all? What happened in fam? See it spin. Oh yeah. my God, look at that spin. And all right, we're gonna talk yeah, about journalism. Go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what? Hey, what's going on? It's your boy. <laughs> I dare I know I dare you to start your next video like that. I might like, What's uh, up YouTube? It's your boy Vernaculus. I'm b -b 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 back for some more t -t talking about the journalism stuff. Oh my god. I, I <laughs> You know, I, I I might write a script like that, but just do it entirely deadpan. Like oh no. I, uh, like, yeah, just, just write a Hello Christmas ladies and gentlemen, Mr. welcome. Homer. It's uh it's your boy Vernaculus here. Just yeah, just actually uh, don't, just, it, just get Chris Raygun to send you one of his video scripts. And then be like, hey, what's up? It's your boy Chris back with another video. Of a video. I'm going to drink some bleach now because I can't believe this <coughs> stupid shit. And then just like, you just clip to you just like really slowly and really just bored climbing up on a desk and being like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> Slowly yeah. putting my head into a noose. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please check out my. <laughs> just, yeah, it's just pure, like, <laughs> honestly, no, you know what? Vernaculus, you're the skeptic community, Stephen Wright. <laughs> <laughs> like, share, and subscribe if you like the video. <laughs> I, 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 I really like that. don't know. Oh, that was funny. One day I was one. one I day put I spot walking. remover on my dog. Now he's gone. <laughs> one day I was walking down the street <laughs> contemplating suicide, and I looked up and saw two kittens standing on. No, no, that's right. One time I was atop a building contemplating suicide, so I jumped, and on the way down I did three perfect backflips and landed with perfect form. One kitten that was standing on the sidewalk looked at the other one and said, "See, that's how you do that." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, whenever I think of the past, it brings back so many memories. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even handle you guys. Oh, I, I love Stephen Wright so much. I know he's snow. I mean, like basically, he's like emo Phillips without the like acid flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> My ex-wife, who shall remain nameless, if I'm ever left alone at her gravestone with a sandblaster. <laughs> I was walking down the street wearing glasses when the prescription ran out. <laughs> Thanks, Obamacare. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. You realize that like, pretty soon uh, we're not even going to be allowed to make jokes. I know. Yeah. We're going to make them while we can. Honestly, though, this, this, <clears throat> entire, this, entire, this entire debacle, though, bring it back to the point of this the whole thing. <clears throat> Honestly, it's just terrible. Um, but it's, I mean, it would, it's like every, it, at all angles. It used to be, I remember two, uh, just a couple years ago before the alt right was a thing and before this fake news thing and we need to like put limits on uh, journalists. Um, like, I mean, the, the, it seemed like the authoritarianism was coming purely from the regressive left, from the SJW side. It seemed as though that. Uh, that's where it was coming from, and it was a backswing from the Bush years, where it was, you know, it was the right who wanted to watch everyone and control everyone and all of that. But now it really does seem as though, like, this, this, uh, this, this intensity, this, this desire to barrel feet first, head first into a fucking police state. It, it's just <laughs> from all angles. Everybody wants it, and they just want to make sure that it's their version. Yep. It, it, they're all just people. authoritarians. Like, <clears throat> I, I don't, 
I don't personally understand it because I'm not an identitarian. But, you know, I mean, yeah, that's what they want. And by God, they're going to have it. <laughs> is it what they want or is it just sort of the the logical conclusion of their actions at this point? Like, uh, I, I, I don't think Antifa knows what they're doing in the sense that they're, you know, their actions are contributing to a police state, you think? I don't know, I, man. Um, they, no, you, I, w I don't think, I mean, my, for myself, I don't think that they do. I think that they are so wrapped up and hypercharged in self-righteousness that uh, it's one of those, I, I can do no wrong. I'm on the side of God and I mean, uh, uh, equality. You know, they're, they're crusaders in the purest terms. They're, they're incapable of seeing negative consequences from their actions. I think, you know, this is one of the things that scares me about the alt-right is that they do, by and large, seem a lot more politically savvy than these, these like, hard-left counterparts of theirs. Mm -hmm. I but, but, entirely disagree. I think, I think the alt-right is entirely unpolitically savvy. Like, they... I mean, they both don't know what they're doing, but I mean, at least Antifa has some idea where, you know, they, they go in and they they cause trouble knowing that the town's response or the city's response or the state's response is going to be to shut it down, even if, um, y you know, they're playing the game of agitation. They know that their actions are going to lead to a response from the state. And they just do their best to know, like to figure out how their actions can elicit a response from the state that is favorable to them. I think that they play the political game much better than the alt right does. I think the alt right goes into things, you know. Basically, we saw it in Charlottesville. The alt right went, tried to hold this rally. They went through the permitted process. They did it all legit, and you know we see them get shut down. Now, I'm not going to say that the alt right or that the you know, ralliers were less violent than the Antifa folks. I think they were both equally violent. But I think that the agitators from Antifa did a better job making it so that their agitation was less focused upon. And I think that's one of the things that makes them politically more savvy than the alt right. Yeah, I mean, just they know they know how to. I mean, just 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 look you know, at the response they, from popular figures in Charlottesville. You know, there's, there's, for some reason, lots of people are still trying to pretend yeah. that Antifa is an, like a non-existent entity or just, or a, some sort of just uprising against heightened American bigotry. As so though they yeah. forgot about all of the riots they inspired before already. And, exactly. Um, yeah. Well, he said, well, here's, well here's, here's the thing though, is that, see, I got to wonder on the perception side of things, right? So when it comes to, um, when it comes to the, the central authority, when it comes to the government and such, and then when it comes also to the authorities within the private sector, which are namely media, um, you know, the, 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 there have been pretty well staked out defined narratives, depending on what partisan or ideological side people fall on. But when it comes to like ordinary people, I mean, I have to wonder how many of the shop owners whose windows were smashed out by no fault of their own. Um, how many of the people who were assaulted or know the people who were assaulted or people who've seen it? I mean, it, it's, it's, I find it increasingly difficult <clears throat> to actually measure public sentiment by way of looking at mainstream or social media because just like with the fringes themselves, these voices, these uh, fringy voices are elevated because of their volume, not because of the numbers of people who actually support them. Now, when I say the alt-right is more politically savvy than the, I guess we're going to start calling them the alt-left. Um, oh, no. You know, and, Using Trump terms. And, well, and, yeah, but with that, though, I mean, if we're, if we're going to if we're going to break this down along those lines, and these are the two competing sides, Antifa believes that their righteousness is somehow going to be a beacon to people all over. And only with the help of media right now are they being presented as anything more than violent thugs who destroy property and assault people. Um, the the alt-right, though, couches their terms so carefully. They don't want anybody thinking that they're racist. They're not racist. 
they're just they're just nationalists with a different perspective they just believe this it's not about that they think they're superior they just they want what's best for everyone and that's what their thinking is even though that's not actually the case as has been betrayed a number of times now by people who in one you know who in public will say this is about a peaceful transition to an ethno state that'll work out for everyone when in private they're saying we need a dog whistle until we reach critical mass so that we can instigate a race war um in, in terms of political savviness, I, I'm, I'm simply meaning that they they couch their terms better. They try and paint, uh, you know, the, basically, you know, they they try. They, it's basically like, they're, they're, hey, look, everyone, better, we yeah, we gave all the, plausible deniability. Yeah, look, we gave the clan hoods pretty colors. Uh, <laughs> we're not the same anymore, guys. It was like you know. Granted, thinking people I, aren't buying it, but young... I personally can't wait to see a rainbow clan hood. I mean, wh when I see a LGBT, you know, solidarity clan hood, oh. that will make my day. Oh, that that, uh, <laughs> that that reminds me of an old uh, Chappelle skit. I think I don't know if you've seen it, but it was like the the, the oh. gay the gay clan member. No, it was the black <laughs> clan member. No, no, no. There was another one where there was a gay clan member, and he was oh. wearing a pink hood instead. And he, he, <laughs> uh, he, 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 he walks up to a black family's house and goes, Ugh, oh, it's, it's hot like the Dickens. Um, so, <laughs> me and my friends got together, and we were talking, and we think it would be better if you guys left the neighborhood. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> we think everyone would be just happier <laughs> if you moved off where the other darkies were. Have you considered going back to Africa? Now, I know you might want to <laughs> leave tonight because it'll take some time to pack. So me and my friends are going to come back and we're going to set a little bonfire in your front yard. Those sketches are genius. <laughs> Well, you know, it, it kind of, it, well, his, I, mean, I guess this is another thing. And, um, I mean, Caleb, you're, you're a bit younger. You're 21. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not, you know, all I'm saying, I don't know if, how much memory you might have of this, but, you know, it used to be that, like, you know, liberalism, the left, right? Lib American liberalism was defined by, you know, kind of crass, kind of snarky humor. Um, yeah, I mean, like, Bill Maher's the residual of that. Like, yeah, Bill Maher, the entire existence of The Daily Show, right? And and though The Daily Show did, I believe, actually did, in fact, contribute to this this environment of snark and, and, and you know, soundbite fucking bullshit we've got, it, at the time when it started, it was kind of, you know, the pushback against what was, you know, a, a renewed right-wing enthusiasm in the form of uh, neoconservatism at the time another fad which played its hand too quick and lost but you know these days the left isn't funny at all it's there's no fu i mean like jim jeffries for fuck's sake i mean oh my him, hmm. oh god his new show oh my god i watched it he was uh, one of my favorite comedians for the longest I know. time god liberal like lib you know and even politically like liberal minded guy right and except it was, uh, you know, it was it was good jokes about anything, and it was like I'll tell offensive jokes because if you can't fucking take them, you're a fucking pussy. And now it's like I now refer to my wife as Zim because Zim doesn't want to be binary <coughs> anymore. What the? Yeah. <laughs> Why, you got, what happened? You get married, and you got sober, and then you actually took your balls off and you put them in a mason jar for your wife under the under the sink. Is that what happened? No, I mean I've seen I've seen promos like uh for his show and it just it, it looks like he takes the most superficial facebook political meme garbage and uses that as material like i i, I remember one of the uh like uh oh, shit uh one of the promos he was saying you know you know i uh <laughs> go 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 uh, just you gotta throw yourself all right, in. All right you gotta throw all right <clears throat> You know, America is now saying that North Korea can't have nukes, right? And then it stops and it says, hear him out, right? And then it clips to him again. It's like, that's like saying, <laughs> that's like Charlie Sheen telling people to lay off the coke. <laughs> it's like, are you, that, that's a joke. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> what? Oh, God. I just... know, it's, it's like, we used to have, we used to have George Carlin. 
and okay. Bill Hicks. Oh, Bill oh. Hicks. I mean, Bill Hicks. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, honestly, like he sometimes he it's wasn't just, even just funny. You just wanted to listen to him talk, right? Yeah. What yeah, are you reading Carl, for? Captain. <laughs> yeah. Who's it? Yeah. And honestly, Lenny Bruce. Yeah. Right. Like it. <clears throat> it almost seems as though there was a tradition within comedy of Lenny Bruce, right? That there was like you know there was this there there were like heirs to the Lenny Bruce throne, you know, Carlin and um. You know, and 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 for a while, uh, people like uh, uh, Jimmy Carr, right? Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, I've seen what I've seen, like you know, especially on Twitter, I love it when I see like the blue check mark, and you check, and it's like you know, some, it's like, well, trans people wouldn't be in such a minority if straight people weren't killing them all the time, and it's like you check, and like first thing in their bios, like stand up comic, like it's like, oh, great, where, <laughs> yeah, how. What the fuck yeah. happened to comedy? Yeah. And it used to be though. It used to be comedy and snark was you know because it's comedy is always a counterculture thing. Comedy always has to go against the grain. You're never gonna have somebody who's like telling jokes which are feeding the mainstream narrative. Like, oh, you're right. Those other people are such idiots. Like they've been telling me all day on the news. Um, and and now comedy's just fucking gone. It's just gone. I mean. Dennis Miller almost seems funny these days. Yeah. <laughs> He's never been funny. Razor Fist. Yeah. Razor Fist is funny because he does Dennis Miller the way Dennis Miller used to do it when it was still counterculture shit. Yeah. And it's like, you know, we've he does Dennis Miller better than Dennis Miller. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. no, Razor Fist is a better Dennis Miller than Dennis Miller in, at his current age could ever be. Um, oh, yeah. And he can quote me on that if he ever decides to. But um, <laughs> but it's you know we we've 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 I mean and, and I'm speaking from a liberal perspective. In addition to sense, it seems that the left has lost everything that used to actually let it win. It's lost its humor and snark. It's lost its intellectual credibility because there was a time when you had people saying, "We need to teach creationism in schools, y'all. We need to teach that Jesus made babies in the garden." <laughs> And I didn't read the book, but I'm pretty sure it was Jesus made babies in the garden and then he put them out in the desert and told them to, you know, just make do and they had to pull up their bootstraps and that's how yeah. America was formed. Yeah. And and then <laughs> and, and then they started to get into sort of equal time. <laughs> yeah. Right, well, no, right. I mean, but that's that, the thing. Like, yeah, well the right is actually the right these days, from what I can see, in terms of mainstream ideological left and right, like if we're gonna accept the binary here. Then the right is both funnier and making more sense. Yeah, I mean that's why I ran as a goddamn Republican. I mean, what the hell? Like, how am I going to run as a Democrat? Like, it's just not going to happen. I can't actually have a differing opinion. I, I I would place a bet that no Democrat is going to win another election. <laughs> like <laughs> ever. They're just ever. they're, they're so so terrible. They're so out of touch. There is no way. I, I just don't think there's a way. But, I mean, well, not in the foreseeable future at no. the national level. Like I no. mean, obviously the states where it's gerrymandered to shit, they're gonna keep winning. Like your state. I mean the whole well, fucking state. Yeah. Like I mean, your governor is a Republican, but he basically has no balls because in order to win as a Republican in Massachusetts, you, you have to be a you Democrat. Have from, yeah, you got to, well, in order to be a Republican, you got to be a rhino. Yeah. You got to be a Democrat from the 90s. <laughs> yes, exactly. A hundred percent. Yep. Ah, oh, Jesus fuck. Yeah, but I mean, I mean like, this, though, well, we, we're looking at this now, though. I mean, we're seeing, so we're like, we're seeing right now, like, and it's funny. I've even been noticing, like, honestly, I got. A thought in my head for a little bit um to maybe run as a republican because for one thing the republican party funds down ticket races and the democrats don't uh, which is uh, why hillary lost well well i i can as someone who ran as a republican nick i can tell you a hundred percent that they don't give a shit about you if you don't follow their uh their herd so to speak like they'll fund your race if you you know play play the party politics but i certainly didn't play the oh yeah, uh, yeah. play the so i well, mean, I mean they're, my, they're not my gonna... best, yeah i mean my my own best republican sort of in would be like oh yeah no i got my start in politics from jack heath <laughs> <laughs> oh the guy who sells cars and has a radio show 
Uh, well, I knew him yeah. as a political consultant, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> him. Just don't just don't mention the all, all the all the labor activism and yeah, yeah just just sort of organized for fucking unions. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, well, you're originally so leave got this the background, big yeah. seven-year gap between working for Jack Heath and working for PC Connection. Um, what happened? <laughs> oh, I was uh, <laughs> traveling, traveling. The the red built myself States. a log cabin. Built myself yeah. a log yeah, cabin. Right. Got myself got a off boyfriend. The grid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, log cabin Republican. I'm a, pro- I'm a progressive North Country <laughs> Republican, y'all. <laughs> but I mean, so it's this is this is the terrifying thing though too, because you know, unfortunately, we're stuck for the time being with these two parts, right? Libertarians might make some inroads, but let's be honest, they've been trying that since the eighties. Best bump they got was Ron Paul in twenty uh, two thousand eight, between two thousand eight two thousand twelve, national identity about it too. Yeah, and it went from 8 to 13% of self-identified conservatives saying they were libertarian. Now, a lot of liberals are starting to come over to the libertarian side. Yep. Myself kind of included. So I'll probably run as that anyway, effectively, because as Fucking, everyone says, you can't I, I get will, elected as an independent. I, I will I will help you so much if you do that, Nick. You don't even understand. Like, oh, I'm going to piss your colleagues off a lot. They're going to be like, why are you supporting oh, this public hey. rail system? Because I do. <laughs> I oh Nick oh Jesus fucking Christ yeah see <sighs> oh no you can ask Vernaculus has known me a while there's I I, I cannot there's there's no like politically speaking there is like nothing I can jive well with initially and then just fuck just up. Nick I don't if, lie. if you if you no. if you manage to win I actually if we if if, <laughs> if, if we manage to win just just go read the bill that that's all I ask you to do just go read the bill um. You know, because public rail is not all it's sold to be, let me tell you. So. Oh, no, we just do need actually, like, you know, dealing with traffic as often as I have. We could use a line that links up with the T. Because for one thing, <laughs> all of these young professionals in southern New Hampshire who travel to Boston could use an easier way to get down there. But also, at the same time, all these Lawrence scumbags who end up getting stabbed outside of local bars when they decide to get mouthy need an easier way to get up here and then back to Massachusetts where they have their <laughs> public, where they have their health care. So, <laughs> got everybody in mind. Oh, wow. this is all I'm all I'm saying is that it's an untapped market. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Well, I mean, listen, if if it was a market that was worth uh, funding, oh. I think the private investment would have rolled in. Holy so. shit! All right, I've actually gotten some super chats. I'm just gonna go over these real quick, and they've been a while. Uh, yeah. Two dollars from Lord Archie. Watch out for the anti trashist Oh, don't worry. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure by the I'm sure if I open my mouth down in Boston, everyone will be very certain I'm their enemy by the end of it. And I will have that classic Doctor Who moment that I'm looking for where I tell <laughs> Vern and whoever he brings and AJ and my friend Laurel, I'm just gonna see this mar everyone run. Run and then we'll all get to run. <laughs> and I didn't go to the gym this week, so I, I kinda need it. Two dollars coming. I'm getting an MRA to see if I. <laughs> Sorry to buck two dollars. I'm getting an MRI to see if I have claustrophobia. I could come up with a cheaper way, but yeah. <laughs> you go for it, Bob. Wait, wait, wait. Is, is that a is is that a right line? Hmm. I I, th- I think Steven so. Right line, I, I, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> actually, no, no. When I hear it, my voice is him. So I'm getting an MRI to see if I have claustrophobia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it is, if it isn't, if it isn't, I hope the buck gets writing credit. And Magog, a more scar, five dollars. Here, have some gold coins for your lady purse, Nick. He he he. Uh, fuck. AJ took my lady purse. I can't even make a gag of that now. Ah, damn. Yeah. This is why you don't live with women, by the way, guys. They take all of your best prop gags. <laughs> yeah, I, I I can attest to that. Yeah. Now, with um, this, good. But no, yeah. So uh, if you're in the Boston area, uh, do not come say hi. Stay away from the Boston Common. Do uh, not. And this isn't even <laughs> bullshit. Do not wear keck if yeah, we're not. Stand shit. Yeah, yeah no, will, don't. That will get that. you into a fight with someone, and then the wrong people will think. This is one thing I also, and I figure, fuck it, because I'm like in no fucks mode given on YouTube these days. Because YouTube, let's honest, let's be honest, it's it's a circle in the drain. Um, I do hope one day that the alt right can find a way to reconcile the fact that their beloved ma- meme Kekistan 
was invented by a Jew, a guy with a uh, an, uh, what is it, an octoroon? He's got it. Yeah. He's a guy a mixed. I think, race. I, think, I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. So you got a, a Jew, a mixed race guy, a sexual deviant. That's Jeff. <laughs> um, an Arab, Habib, uh, Louis Laveau, I believe. A, weeaboo uh, trash. Weeaboo, weeaboo trash. We leftist, <laughs> leftist, weeaboo trash is destroying <laughs> this country. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, basically, like, basically, like the 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 um the group that gave you Kekistan is everything you hate. And that is why we love fucking with you when you try and make it your yep. own. Kakistan yeah. is a big fucking troll, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, that was a great night, too. I mean, <laughs> meme storms only come once in a great while, and that was a good one. <laughs> the only one that was better, honestly, was when it was shitting on Armored Skeptic for being a, a pompous douchebag. And that's just because it was so easy coming up with <laughs> skeptic sort of yeah. But yep. Yeah. Five oh one from Staggerson Mc Staggerson Jags. I'm better than Magog giving you money. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Now to bring it back though, one thing I mean, we were, so we were talking about like you know actual partisan differences within you know real government, real parties. The, I don't want to even use the word real politic because that means something different. But real politique. Yeah. Yeah. But with that though, the fact that Go all you know, Bismarckian. Well, if, this was something I noticed with the Democrats, right? Like Democrats ostensibly represent the political left in this country, even though they don't. Like they really don't. Be it the the rational like left or the the fringe left. They don't represent any of that. What they Do you have... think they represent like like the, the aristocratic left? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. The, the the people who are you know no. left in in an in an abstract way, but in reality, no, it's it's no different than the Republican Party, the Democrat Party. Both of these parties, the only people that they represent are their donors. That's it, right? I mean, yeah, the, we we're already starting to see a sea change within the GOP right now. It's going more libertarian on a on a socially libertarian level. Republicans are starting to say gay marriage. None of my business, increasingly. Mm -hmm. You know, social, yeah. and I hate giving Milo credit because let's be honest, he's just Oscar Wilde or an Oscar Wilde wannabe. But, um, Diet Wilde. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's Diet Oscar Wilde. Um, but with, you know, he said social conservatism is dead. And the only place we really seem to see that is in this fringy, cringy alt right movement where they're like, Oh, you! Oh, you're a woman on the internet. You're a waste because you ain't pumped out any white babies yet. Like, you type that with a straight face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, I think by and large, like the anti-gay, even anti-trans, basically anti-you doing you mentality, outside of on the left, where it's like if you're a straight cis white male. Yeah, you know, on the right, when it comes to like the GOP, it does seem they're drifting further and further away from the classic "I condemn you for your lifestyle" kind of shit, and it's getting more into the libertarian side of "do what you do and don't hurt anybody." And okay, uh, yeah, but you know this 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 is seen by the alt right as uh, cucking. I don't oh, know yeah. if you knew that. Well, no, I mean, I can say, I could say, I could say with some level of certainty that any time, like, I get in, and I'm sure you do too in the comments. Like, if you get a comment, for instance, that's saying, um, like, "Oh, you're such a cuck," it's like, "Okay, well, you've established for me what level we're working on here." It's down by my dick right now. Yeah. While you're down there, if you wouldn't mind. Do, do you know what I normally say to to to, you know, comments like that or? No, Th thank, thank you, thank you for your comment. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> like, it's no, not. No, minus, minus. Thank you for stopping by. Your contribution was invaluable. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, with, with, yeah, but within this, it is kind of funny because I mean, there was this, especially if you were politically minded uh, in the early two thousands. People love pointing out how one time the Democrats were the Republicans and the Republicans were the Democrats, and then they switched. Yeah. Well, it's like we're starting to kind of see that, that is... now. 
Well, it's, it's such one. That's such a simplistic way of putting that. That's I mean, it's it's yeah, but that's how yeah. It, it's it, I I know that's how people talk, but I mean, it's like I. Ah, oh, Jesus. I, I don't even know how to begin to address someone who just says that. Because it, it ignores so many different things that happened in context. I mean, it wasn't just like, oh, all of a fucking sudden, you know, Democrats became Republicans and Republicans became more liberal Republicans. I mean, like the first <laughs> the first African Americans elected to the federal legislature were fucking like, uh, sorry, the first um, black um, you know, legislators that were elected at the federal level were Republicans. It's it's hard to to explain that, but uh, I don't know. I don't even know how to how to begin. But well, you know, I think I think what I think what the like you know it, it's still reductionist, but I think what they reduced that statement from was that at one time the Republicans were kind of the liberal party. And, you know, in our modern sense of the word, I mean, Republicans were, you know, the Republicans were the ones who were largely, and you know, who were, who were abolitionists. <clears throat> the Republicans were largely also at the time, they were still, well, they ended up turning, you know, federal power over state power when it came to it. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, at one time, the Republicans yeah. were more I mean, the liberal party, even though they still called it conservative. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's so hard to, to, like, put a pinpoint on it because, I mean, the Democrats were, of course, all the way up until, like, the 40s were sort of the party of states' rights. I mean, with the exception of FDR, where when the Warren Court kind of came in and FDR kind of 12 years, you know, like, and it actually, it even started before that, so to speak, but... Oh, it's yeah. Truman... And I'm not saying before uh, that. I know Truman came after, but no. But well, the thing to remember, you know, about Truman's election over uh, Wallace, right? Yeah. Well, Wallace and and Dewey, right? Uh, Dewey was the second term, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, or, the, well, back then this was like, yeah. Well, this was when the the party decided the vice president for a candidate, and yeah. they forced Wallace's uh, entire block out of the convention so they could anoint Truman because if you look into Truman Truman was Truman was effectively George W Bush of his age he was a useful idiot he failed business after business after business he was a likable guy in the senate because he would go along with whatever he was told and he was he was very easy to keep in line and that's who they wanted yeah strident anti-commie because wallace wallace's idea is he wanted to work with khrushchev and say all right let's have two competing systems and we'll borrow from each other when we find failings on our own and we'll see which one works better in the actual free market we'll let the market decide which is better as opposed to the truman doctrine which was got to crush these commies now and all this and then khrushchev who was a liberal communist reformer in his own right had his own hardliners demanding uh demanding you know a war footing on everything and saying we need to crush capitalism even though <laughs> well, Khrushchev's, Khrushchev's ideas were largely also that like okay you know communism has won a very large landmass and a very strong national uh, position let's uh let's prove that it works by making it work and it was the Making same thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, 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 yeah. Define if it, worked. If it doesn't work, we will make it work by removing everyone who is not working and putting yeah. them. I just want to say if, if, if your political system requires genocide to work, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> pretty safe to okay. say. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But listen, I mean, Hitler did nothing wrong, et cetera, et cetera, right? Yeah. So, so what you can take away from this, folks, from this discussion about Truman, is that George Bush would have nuked Japan. <laughs> oh, in a heartbeat, he would have. Oh, the fucking that heartbeat. Was, that was the most beautiful fucking way to sum that up, Vern. Yeah. <laughs> well, not, uh, when we were talking about sort of uh, party politics, uh, and Republicanism at least, because you know they constantly say that they're the, the party of Lincoln, right? Oh, well, it, Jesus. It, it brings up the um, <clears throat> the image of an old um, political cartoon 
where Lincoln was running and he was, uh, uh, you know, considering abolition or he was, you, you get what I'm saying. But uh, there was a cartoon where they called him the rail candidate. And it was sort of like, uh, you know, a, a, a comically racist portrait of a black man, you know, holding the front of a, a thin piece of wood with a, uh, uh, a white man holding the the back of the thin piece of wood, and it had Lincoln splitting down the middle, or at least saying that, "Oh, this rail is going to split me down the middle." And it just, it, it just, it's it's incredible to me that Lincoln himself would have, would have been considered a filthy centrist. No, oh, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean <laughs> Lincoln, Lincoln was third party when he won the presidency. I mean, he had never. The only elected offices he had held before holding the presidency were as a Whig, you know, and then the Whig party just dissolved. And well, you know, there with, you go. with that, though, I mean, right there. So, you know, you know, a lot of people, the people who don't fall for the, you know, division politics, if you got to pick a side, right? The people who mm -hmm. don't fall for that shit, um, you know, they've it's it's constantly been this battle. Because you know, because because partisan zeitgeists such as this modern one of you're either anti far or all right, they're so easy for people who are either too busy or let's be honest, too stupid or both, to really put mm. the time and effort into thinking deep on the issues to come out to their own conclusions. It's so easy to take this this you know prepackaged bullshit ideology and say, okay, this is what I believe because it appeals to me in these ways. And the fact that, I mean, if, if Lincoln was actually being painted in that sense as like this feckless centrist with no beliefs at the time, <laughs> despite the fact that he probably put more on the line as a leader for this country than most any other president that I could think of. Right. Um, then, I mean, it really does show that this whole game of you got to join one side or the other. It's yeah. I mean, it's it's so it's such a base thing that. Yeah. It, well, well, the thing is, it, it's. Be, taking a stand against the whole, you know, pick the form of totalitarianism you want, it, that that is in itself picking a side. You know, so like I, I'm not oh, yeah. saying I'm not saying it's a bad thing. What I'm saying oh, yeah. is that so, sort of like like it, it, this is what Orwell experienced, right? It's sort of like a, a he was living at a time where a lot of the intelligentsia, let's say, were saying. You have to you have to pick communism or fascism. Like you, you just have to pick one. You need to silence your criticisms because there's a war on, right? Yeah. But Orwell, whatever whatever problems you got with the side you you picked, we'll we'll sort them out down the line exactly. by putting a by putting a bullet in your head. Yeah, exactly. But I don't like that not choosing communism and not choosing a form of fascism. Is considered the sort of cowardly milk toast position. No, it's it's yeah, no it, it, it's <laughs> it's it's being anti-totalitarian. What's well, you know when I hear people ask, me, yeah, like, whoa, have you picked a side? And it's like, yeah, I picked a side a long time ago. My side. Right. You're idiots, <laughs> and I'm yeah. not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sorry, <clears throat> if I'm gonna lord some sort of like you know intellectual superiority over you, but uh, I, I decided not to go with the um, you, you know, with the shake weight version of politics here. You know? <laughs> I, I thought maybe I maybe I take a oh step on that. Can you imagine the sham wow guy trying to sell Stalinism? Well, was, what was the what was oh, the set it Christ. forget it thing? What was that thing? The what? No, it was the, the product. Wow. Yeah, no, no, it wasn't Shamwa. It was the oven. It was like you said it and forget it. Oh, right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's the way. That's yeah. the way people. A lot of people seem to actually choose partisan ideological sort of th things, right? It's that like, oh, well, you know what? I'm gonna be. I'm just gonna choose. I'm gonna be a conservative, or I'm gonna be a liberal now, or a progressive, and I'm just mm -hmm. gonna go with what that is. And, and then I'll find out what that is from from the people at, uh, in charge of this movement. And um, going forward, I'm just going to take that that side and whatever hot take comes along with it, because um, I don't want to check on my chicken to make sure I'm not overcooking it. I just want to set it and forget it. Right. It's this sort I, of I, uh, it's a sort of yeah. top down, you know, from from the identity to the arguments as opposed to 
or uh, identity to position as opposed to positions form your identity like your political yeah. identity at least it, it, just it's sort of fundamental uh, yeah oh well it, it's the fundamental grounding of just identitarian politics to begin with i mean you're you're just exactly like you're saying nick you're uh, i'm just going to follow everything even if you don't know whatever the hell it means it's just that is my identity done yeah uh, like, no no i'm on this side this, now i can well, here's the thing about abortion. I mean, I can think of a few times people who had children maybe shouldn't have had them. And um, I can kind of see the arguments, but uh, I mean, forget those. You know what? I, I got to be pro-life. I'm a conservative. Or uh, I, got a, uh, I got a solid uh, Carlin opening for you uh -huh. regarding this. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, this is what he opened with. He didn't start with any, you know, beginning fluff or anything. He Carlin walked out on stage and said, hey, you ever notice everybody who's against abortion is someone you wouldn't want to fuck in the first place? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I guess, uh. And no, 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 people in chat. That's 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 not an argument, but it, it is, is funny. It, it is funny. <laughs> it is funny. And that here's the thing, funny is important. But I mean, we, it, well, it's a funny thing. I mean, you mentioned Orwell in this. And let me ask you, Vern, do you ever like, do you ever feel like you're, it's a stale meme? The like, even though meme? it's per, no, I mean, just, yeah, just, just referencing, invoking Orwell. It's, it's almost like, because I mean, I get this when I, with Hitchens and Orwell. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, well, I hate to do this again, but this argument was rather well summed up by a man who is smarter than I am. Yeah, Here it is. it's just like, well, maybe if people would fucking listen, yeah, okay. I wouldn't have to <laughs> listen. I wouldn't have to bring it up so often. But no, yeah, I mean, um, I, I, well, it makes you wonder. I mean, if Hitchens ever got tired of citing Thomas Paine, like, my God, I wish there was somebody. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> it's just like we. This is one of the things that's been killing me too. When I ask, where are the public intellectuals? Where, where are the bright minds having the good debates? that can help us really hash this shit out. And it's like the best they've got is like Jordan Peterson. You know? mm. Yeah. I'm not going to, I won't, I won't fucking deny the man's insight or intellect. I mean, he's fucking very smart guy. I'd love to just fucking have a beer and pick the dude's brain for a few hours, but he's, he's not, well, he's not Hitchens for one. I mean, but he's, uh, yeah, I mean, like, he brings so much shit he's, back to God. He's good, but he's not great. You know? I mean, uh, who's I think, that? I, I think he's he's vague and fluffy when he needs to be decisive and precise. And he's decisive and precise when he needs to be vague and fluffy. Well, do you think maybe um, the, this is part of the problem, part of the reason that we find people so readily and easily and regularly falling into these traps of, of, of hysterical ideological nonsense is that there are no genuine thought leaders i mean if you look to left and right right now right who are like you know in the pop mainstream left and right or even well, on you've the got, alternative you, side. You, you, you've got sam harris still yeah you got sam mm -hmm. harris but sam, sam harris sam harris has been like practically blacklisted by every liberal you know organization harris? yeah harris is practically yeah. begging for speaking engagement at truck stops at this point yeah there's yeah, there's, like, there's, du there's douglas murray there is uh let's see there's still ion her oh billy bong oh oh that's his epoch choper of the right i mean <laughs> <laughs> i've oh. you know i've heard that comparison before i yeah i know a funny it's, one. well that's it's one of those ones that comes in and it stings like the respect i have for the guy stings but then the, because because you kind of get it yeah but then the, yeah the rational part of my brain is like yeah i i think uh i remember uh chopra himself was doing a like a ha had a debate you need with to uh, do is clean your room yeah buckle <laughs> no, uh but uh, he he was he had a debate with I think Sam Harris and Michael Shermer, and uh, an audience member brought up one of his uh, Chopra's past statements, and uh, he said, uh, uh, "I might be getting the quote a little bit wrong, but paraphrasing." <laughs> paraphrasing, he said, uh, uh, "Chopra, you once said that uh, 
belief is the mark of an uneducated mind. Is that true? Yes. Do you believe that? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta sort it out, bucko. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, it's, well, this is like, I mean, one of the central, like, one of the things, and I've actually, I'm going to have to re-record it because it's dated at this point. I recorded a video that was pretty savage about the state of thought leadership in our age. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, if, if we're going to look to, like, mainstream left and right, yeah, like, the very fact that Gavin McGinnis basically needs to bail water out of his own boat when it comes to proud boys in the alt-right. <laughs> yeah? yeah? I mean, yeah. And, and, he's, and not, he's not showing up in Boston. No, he's not. Shit. He's not. And and you know what? I mean, honestly, if I was in his position, I'd show up at a free speech rally to actually make my points about the fact that there's a difference, if there is a difference between. I mean, he's got literally. Boys. I got my gang gangsta tattoo here. I'm so fucking edgy, and then you know, I mean, I I you know, I wouldn't shy away from. And this is no shame on you, Caleb. I wouldn't shy away from an invite to speak publicly. At an event, especially if it was hosted by people whose ideology I detest, but at the same time, I mean, like if, I, if no, I mean I no no I understand your position. I'm not I'm not bashing you for that. Um, my, my point with this though is that so, what do we got? We got we got the Young Turks, yeah. We got Chink and what's her face <laughs> and the other fucking. We got oh those are going to be the, the on the left. Yeah, they're they're what the distillation of Noam Chomsky's fucking uh, oh, like God. thoughts when he's on the shitter, yeah. Yeah. And then the, on the, the right, it's it's, it's <laughs> Noam Chomsky's like sifted shit. Basically, yeah, it's, it's like terrible. basically they pulled yeah. all the corn. They pulled all the corn out of Chomsky's turds and built a little man out of it, and that's their yeah. god now. And it, that, that, that's what we've got on the left. And then on the right, what have we've got? We've got we've got the same bimbo fucking half wit slack wit blondes like fucking anywhere from Tommy Loren to uh, to to Lauren Southern. Who are like, I'm a journalist now, watch this <clears throat> activism. But I'm a journalist, but watch this activism. But I'm a journalist. <laughs> and then you have the you, you have the you have the diet and coulters. Yeah, diet and coulters, and then you got the alternative. Oh, that, that like, oh god, god. I have not heard that one, Vern, but that is fucking perfect. Honestly, oh, yeah, god, I mean, diet and oh, you, by you, the way, by the way, Vernaculus, this guy is fond of stealing clever terms and using them on the house floor. Oh, okay. oh don't. You you, yeah, you may you know you know I'll record. go on record. You may just let me know privately when you do, so I can pat myself on the back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no 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 problem. So 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 Vern, for uh, just full disclosure, I have actually quoted you. Um, I I didn't oh. cite you. I, I cited you because I didn't know your name at the time. Oh, okay. uh, but I quoted you in a committee meeting one time. I, oh, God, I gotta remember it. But it was um, was it anything it was before good? the week? Uh remember it. it it mustn't have been that amazing but it, but at the time it was just perfect because i just watched the video of yours i think it was the uh the video you did actually on orwell when you were um you were doing the reading from george orwell's like um oh, not right. memoirs or something like that. yeah something out of that and it was before i think the criminal justice and public safety committee and i qu i quoted you and it was just it fit perfectly but um now, Vern, don't go getting a big head. Yeah. You got a small body, and that could tip you over. Yeah, don't want, don't want to get top heavy. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. No, I mean, but with like, this, let's 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 examine this look a little more, though. I, at this point, a few times, I'm gonna keep hammering it home until it it sets in. Uh, people are rejecting old media because old media sucks. You know? mm -hmm. Media is unfortunately, despite the fact that everyone on Earth is apparently an independent free thinker who can make up their own minds. Apparently, there is some merit to the social justice and even the alt-right narratives that media is shaping our opinions because everyone's a bunch of dummies who need to be told what to th think. Now, if there's any merit to that, you know, the very fact that we've got the Young Turks and Melissa Harris Perry and Sean King facing off against Paul Joseph Watson, Stephen Crowder, and oh, Gavin God. McGinnis... What the fuck kind of arguments are we going to be walking into 10 years from now when people are like, you know, just like I found, you know, I found Hitchens, you know, mainly through YouTube, to be honest with you. I've read some of his stuff beforehand, but it was watching his debates, listening to his, his expressions and his ideas. If it's going to come down to some hipster with a twirly mustache or some retard in front of a map or some raging bull sitting behind an overpriced desk 
or yeah, some like angry woman who thinks like you know hard work is reserved for slaves. If this is like if these are the people who people are paying attention to now, and these are the people whose videos and mentions and talks are going to get circulated over and over and over again, ten years from now, is, is it going to be worse than 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 um, than idiocracy had imagined? I'm seeing I, I was actually just about to say idiocracy because that that's what came to mind. I mean, like there's the amount of time, but you know, it's definitely uh definitely going that direction, which kind of fucking sucks. Well, I mean who would you say on the right is like the who would you see on the right who's the most intelligent sort of like at least thought leader? in that oh, public Jesus. Person. Like, public like, person. like like yeah yeah, yeah. public I persona mean, I, or, or I guess like, you could say like yeah. like Dinesh D'Souza almost but even <clears throat> then like <clears throat> yeah I mean it right right Nick exactly you you, you hear my frustration like, I'd go with Ben Shapiro that's... way before Dinesh D'Souza oh yeah I was gonna say either Shapiro or, or uh, Peter Hitchens no. honestly no I mean well Peter Doug, Doug, well, Peter Douglas Hitchens. Murray as well yeah, well, Peter Hitchens undoes yeah. you know Peter Hitchens undoes his uh, critical thinking faculties the moment you ask him about the drug war. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, I no, mean, I mean, and that's that's a matter of opinion. I mean, I, I would say though, no, I mean, Dinesh D'Souza, I mean, effectively like a Christian dominionist who violates campaign finance law because he's that kind of dishonest. No. no have you no. seen Have you seen Shapiro's debate with Jenk Uger? Well, no, no, no uh, not Shapiro's. I'm sorry, D'Souza's. Oh, oh yeah. I, well, I've seen them all. So okay, all right, yeah. I mean, there's <laughs> yeah. God. It's He's just, just it's like Caleb. Caleb here is one of them. Caleb here is still at that point in his youth where uh, he hasn't uh, he doesn't get what? like 20 minutes into an hour long thing and says, "I'm gonna fucking kill myself. I'm gonna watch. <laughs> yeah, I'm no, gonna go. No, I'm gonna go watch. I, I'm now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, he, no, he's no, not, he's I, not that, I'm he's not that far from me in the, in his youth. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm 24. Yeah, but you're yeah. older. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ageist sack of shit, Nick. Yeah. Jesus my, my, oh, my soul, no, not, my soul is 78. No, no, I'm a no, fucking, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like 900 years old at this point in terms of cynicism. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, how good can yeah. things get? You're asking the wrong questions. <laughs> yeah. no, I still have uh, I still have my beacon of of young idealism I mean, and hope. You... Oh, keep in mind, I mean, well, for fuck's sake, I mean, at what, 21, I was just working in sales, and at 24, I was... Well... We, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, defending the teachers' union with potentially illegal campaigns through third-party political contractors that involve me running surveillance on people. So, hey. well, you know, and that's yeah, why we was, love you. Know, you. It, was, it was interesting. Hey, I wouldn't <laughs> trade that. No, honestly, 200. Well, here's the other talk thing. Talk about an adventurous job. Oh, my God. Talk about fucking $200 a day plus gas and expenses just to drive around western Massachusetts in the fall. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. All right. All right. No, all right. Rub, job, rub it in. Rub it oh, in. Yeah. Why don't no, you? my job was just driving, and it was five speed too. So it'd be great because I'd be on like the Berkshire highways, and I'd be like, just drop a gear. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I'm just passing someone off. So it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and also, I knew that I, I knew my employers had any fucking um any any legal problems they had settled, but um no, but it's fucking. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, so so we've got this though. But I mean, here's the thing: we need to really struggle to find, you know, intellectuals worth respecting, and it gets hard because a lot of times they express opinions which are, in our opinions, stupid. I mean, Jordan Peterson's, you know, it all comes back to God kind of thing. Like, mm -hmm. all right, I'm 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 I'm, well, I'm the sorry thing is there, with... Max Colby, but it doesn't work for me. Yeah, well, yeah, well, the thing is with with uh, with public. Uh, you know, with thought leaders and, you know, public figures, people are willing to dismiss them based on, like, dismiss them as not worth listening to, you know, based on one opinion of theirs that they disagree with. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's sort of like, yeah. jo Jordan Peterson is is a, a, a master when it comes to freedom of expression. 
Oh yeah, no, he's, like, he's, like he's, he's, he's he's incredible, right? But when well, he starts, too, I mean, but when he starts discussing, you know, that you know what Nick was mentioning, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. we we diverge a little bit, but that still doesn't mean I can't respect, at, at least respect his reasoning somewhat. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. No, I, that, I love, I love yeah, a respect, res, respect him as a, as a mind at least. Oh yeah, no, and I, I genuinely, yeah, no, I, I love and appreciate a well represented well-rounded argument that i fundamentally disagree with um you know to, to to hack into the hitchens thing and we're gonna end up with a godwin's law for hitchens eventually um <laughs> but you know to hack into that i mean like he he made the best arguments for the wars in iraq and afghanistan that i've ever, i've really ever heard mm -hmm. i still don't necessarily agree with those wars but i really can't fault his his arguments um yeah I think that's probably where we diverge the most. You what, and I, at least. What, with the war? With the war. Well, and then, I mean, I, I'll honestly, too, admit that I've got, like, pers weird personal hang-ups about it, too. But, um, oh, yeah. no, but, I mean, but, but fundamentally, I mean, I was saying, like, his arguments in favor of them mm -hmm. were they the best. I mean, stupid. Oh, my God. They were so much no, better were... than anything coming out of the State Department. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And the, yet, the, the, the State Department should be thankful they had Hitchens. Yeah, and this like, is what Jesus this is. Christ. Yeah, I, this is I, I, uh, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but no. I, I remember one debate where uh, Hitchens was arguing with, uh, oh God, I don't remember his name, but he came out, he was very eccentric. He had like a sort of like cowboy hat on. Remember, do you remember this one? No? It's not ringing any bells, but... But uh, I, I remember he came out and said, uh, well, since the uh, since the State Department is so terrible at making their case, I have to do it for them. Yeah. <laughs> like <he> was... <laughs> no, I mean, I it got... Yeah. So... Well, that was the thing. I mean, I remember during the Obama years, it got to a point where, like, I got frustrated because I was making the average conservative argument against Obama better than the conservatives could. And I was no big fan of Obama, but I'm pretty... I still... And to this day, I even feel he... He made a better president than McCain or Romney would have, in my opinion. Right? Yeah, I, I do. I do. And it's not it's not necessarily a glowing endorsement of him, mm -hmm. um, nor a, a doom and gloom condemnation of either of of those two. In fact, I, I even though it bucks the trend, I have a I have a substantial amount of respect for John McCain, especially because I've actually gotten the chance to speak with him privately. And I've mm -hmm. had the chance to actually question him in public. And at least for a while, before like the you know the 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 old the Alzheimer's and shit or whatever it is kicked in, um, <laughs> the I mean, brain I heard, tumors, you know. Yeah, yeah I he, was, just, he just had surgery too, right? Yeah, well, I was. I remember I was like I was uh, I was running an education campaign during the primary, and we ended up at a bunch of his rallies before like the consultants put Palin on his ticket and started really taking over. Here's the thing: if McCain had stayed McCain in 2008. And not gone the consultant route with Palin and all this other Make America oh God, yeah. first again. He pro he might have won. He might have won. Pa Palin Palin was an insulting choice. Yeah, yeah. Just, Palin, Palin was a fucking was... millstone around his neck. But with that though, I mean, I remember when it came to the question of climate change, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. He said at the time, he's like, he's like, you know, there's a compelling argument for man's actions affecting climate change. But here's the mm -hmm. real question even if that's not the case is making our air and our water cleaner something you can actually be against is leaving a cleaner and better environment and world for our children something that is worth politicizing and i was like good okay, answer buddy yeah. oh shit. <laughs> yeah I mean, yeah, I mean, he was very common I, I sense feel... right up until he, he got, you know, right until he became truly, I am the, the, the anointed one or whatever. I mean, at least I can say from kind of a libertarian perspective, of course, we don't tend to like state involvement and things like that. But I mean, I would tend to agree with an answer like that. I mean, you know, why would you want to politicize an issue like that? Why would you want to bring government into the fold? Why would you not just want to, you know, try to handle those things like conservation land on the local level kind of do, you know, yeah. um, one of the things I'm pretty, yeah, one of the things I'm pretty passionate about is privatizing um, conservation land because up north there's actually pretty much, 
about as much um, private conservation land as there is public, with the exception of the well, people the national park. Yeah, pe people oftentimes forget that, like you know, the 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 NRA card holding hunter Republican, right, who wants government to respect his gun rights and all of that. Those are the biggest fucking conservationists out there. They they will put they put fucking they put yeah. green peace to shame. <laughs> I know, which and it gets no press, and it will never get any press. But you know, it's like people like myself, my father, my friends. You know, people who hunt, people who shoot. Like ex you're exactly people right. Hiding. Yeah, I mean, people who just appreciate and live in. I mean, I, one thing I think maybe makes us different here in New Hampshire and New England in general too. I remember being taught this in like third grade was that like midwestern industrial plants right their smokestacks were so high so that the pollution would get carried up and over and that's where our shitty acid rain came from and it was mm -hmm. one of these things that it wasn't about like we need to save the earth and save the whales and all this shit it was uh like our ecosystems our environment is being poisoned by actions that are not our own which is why it might make sense to support some kind of federal thing but it was it like the like the new hampshire environmentalism it's never been about like we need to stop climate change because it'll kill us all it's been about we understand and appreciate the delicacy of ecosystems and nature and we love our ecosystems and our nature and if anyone fucks with them there will be hell to pay <laughs> yeah that, that's pretty much it i mean like ah uh, it you know and it, that won't get any press that won't get you know seen for what it is you know it's just going to be the, the same narrative it's just going to be the same you know environmentalists at the national level who are going to say you need a carbon tax and here's why and it has no bearing or relevance to what goes on at least in new hampshire certainly not what goes on in maine you know, I mean, well, Maine, another example. It means, it means another state, though, honestly. Like, you talk about a Maine conservative. That in no way is reflective of what the rest of the nation's conservatism is like. It's Maine. Yeah, it's Yankee and conservatism. It's weird. Yeah, and it's its yeah, own I, thing. And fuck right off if you don't understand it. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> and I think part of that is kind of the libertarian bend to it. I mean, like you see people like Senator Brakey up in Maine, who is now going to run for U S Senate against King. Um, you know, you, you have significantly more libertarian leaning kind of conservatives up there in the same in New Hampshire. You have some of it in Vermont, but for the most part, Vermont's just kind of dominated by, you know, um, trust fund babies and, you know, well, God I mean only knows who all right. Well, I mean, earlier in the stream, we were talking about how that that stupid reductionist thing of like, oh, did you know Republicans were the old Democrats? Da, 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 da. Are we are we right now ourselves in this point in time uh, standing or sitting upon that sort of precipice at which point that which was liberal yes. is now conservative? The answer that is yes. Is now liberal. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how to say it you know, very eloquently, but I, I'm witnessing it. You know, I, I'm witnessing in, in just, you know, since 2016 to now, the at least the election cycle to now, I'm witnessing the Republicans, you know, and the Democrats both having an identity crisis. Um, you know, at least in New Hampshire, I know it's, it's happening nationally as well, but I think in New Hampshire, you get a, a kind of microcosm of it that is more extreme. And when Joseph Stalkup, one of the uh, Democrats out in Keene, uh, who's also young, he's two days younger than me, actually, um, when he switched parties to, to the Libertarian Party, I mean, that that was big. I mean, when he's in history, he's the second Democrat to have ever done that. That's it. He's the only other one. And both sides right now are going through an identity crisis. They are experiencing this division, you know, on the left, it's kind of a, almost the Sanders socialistic, almost culturally libertarian uh, leftists. Um, but you also have a couple of other factions. You have the, you know, kind of more corporatist Democrats, and then you also have the more social justice kind of Democrats as well. So you kind of have three factions on the left. And then on the right, you have, um, the social conservatives, 
Um, you have the main street traditionalists, the main the uh, the main street Republicans who are kind of just moderates of some sort. It's not really clear who they are, and then you have the libertarians. So you have this massive factionalization in the New Hampshire House, and you need at least four of those factions to get anything done. And good luck. Um, you, you so know, it's th like the biggest government is the smallest government. <laughs> it, it, it's it's true. I I mean it's it's really weird to see it happen, but that's pretty much what it's like right now. And it, and it's going on on a national level, but the microcosm of it in New Hampshire is so much more extreme, and it doesn't get a lot of attention. But um, you are seeing the parties kind of shifting and realigning. I mean, this year you've had more people, uh, not just myself, Brandon, and Joe. Um, but you, you've had even more people defect. I mean, there was a North Country Democrat who became a Republican. There was a Nashua Democrat who became a Republican for no other reason than the fact that the Democrats started treating them like shit. Yeah, I mean, it's, they, well, they it's been funny in my own in my own thinking about running for office, um, which I'm pretty I'm, I'm I'm pretty set in. I'm gonna do it because the worst thing that'll happen is I'll lose. lose. Yeah. yeah. I lost plenty of shit. It's kind of like yeah. dictated the course of my life, but um, so yeah, yeah failure, well, failure letting... is kind of your thing, right? Oh yeah, no, I'm very <laughs> familiar with failure. No, I mean you don't, you don't, you don't get the looking like I do if if you win all the time. Um, but it's it's like one thing that never actually crossed my mind was running as a Democrat, and and this is and, and I worked for them for a long time. I was I'm and I'm as liberal as I ever was. But honestly, the Democrat Party, it's not a liberal party. It's not. It's an authoritarian yeah. party with its own odd, kind of gross, uh, pretty disgusting overall uh, sets of interests that the, they seem dead set on. If it's you know, social politics, it's placate these blocks which have shown that they're politically <laughs> motivated and activated and they'll keep us in office and uh, placate these... Um, you know, prim, you know, largely corporate interests, usually law firms, um, and the, and the like. Uh, but whoever will pay us and uh, keep everyone, keep everyone that's supporting us happy, so just so we can stay in office. And it's that classic politician shit, where it's, how you doing? I'll do anything to stay in office. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll I'll rename my myself uh film film my mouth with farts and uh, <laughs> you guys have seen that if that'll get me votes. Yeah. yeah, if that'll get me votes. Now I understand some of you really believe strongly in this, and I'll believe strongly in that too, so long as I'm in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh... Or or so long, or so long as the check shows up in my bank account. Yeah, and and, and that's. <laughs> That's where we're yeah. at. I mean, it never crossed my mind once of running as a Democrat, and I don't think I'd ever yeah. want to. That's a party. Uh, I'm actually sadly still registered as a Democrat because here in New Hampshire, you have to register for a party to vote in primaries. And I did vote for Sanders. And um, and now, granted, I ended up voting for Trump, but that was because I lost a bet. And <laughs> hey, well, I lost one bet. I won another one. Um, so yeah. broke even and I, got a blowjob. I, I didn't get to vote for who I wanted to because he dropped out almost immediately after the first debate. Who was that? Who was that? Uh, oh, it was Jim Webb. Oh, gee. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, the one who uh, said, I'm the only person on the stage who killed a communist or something like that. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 that wasn't it. It wasn't it. I, I remember the line clearly. <laughs> At least I think I do. But, uh, uh, Anderson Cooper, I, th I think he was the one running it asked, uh, like, who do you think the biggest enemy in politics, uh, like, the, the biggest enemy you've made in politics, or something like that, right? And, you know, uh, uh, you know, oh, Hillary, yeah. Hillary, Hillary started in with, you know, the, the Republicans, you know, that got some cheers, and then you got, you know, Bernie Sanders going, the big banks, you know, and it's, oh, yeah, it's great, and then you get, or Wall Street, I think you said, and then you've got uh, whoever the third guy was. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, Martin O'Malley. Yeah, uh, Martin O'Malley saying like the gun lobby or whatever, and then oh, you go Jesus. to Jim, and then you go to Jim Webb, and he says, probably that soldier in Vietnam who chucked a grenade at me, but he is not here oh. to talk to right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fucking awesome! I was right, like, yeah, 
Yeah, it's real quick. I'm going to go. Um, just I'm exploding right here. I'm going to go take a leak. I'm going to leave this in your capable hands. I'll be back. We'll chat a bit more and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah. All right. Man, my right. capable hands. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I know. We've got the same cable pretty much, so let's let's hope that Xfinity does its thing. Well, no, doesn't do its thing. Let's hope Xfinity forgets to do the opposite thing. of the thing. Do the opposite of the thing. Keep the internet solid. And when I get back, yeah. I'm sure there will be plenty of Super Chat questions for these two and myself, because that's how we're going to wrap this thing up. I'll be right back. Okay, all right. Very cool. So who was, uh, who was your favorite, Caleb? Uh, In my the, favorite, presidential I, race? I, I did not like if any it, of them. If you had to pick one, <laughs> if if I had a gun to my head, I, I'd choose the bullet. Yeah. To be perfectly honest, I actually really? I voted for Verm and Supreme in the primary, which uh, oh. which made the, uh, the local Republican uh, Republican uh, really mad because he actually yeah, he weren't too happy. There. Right? Yeah, he was there right at the time, and in order to vote for Verm and Supreme, I had to draw a Democratic ballot in the primary. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this, so this is before I ran as a Republican. So he sees me draw a Democratic ballot in the primary. Uh-huh. And um, I no voted no. for Vermin. Of course. Yeah, yeah, big no-no. And he's like, why do you have a blue ballot? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm voting for Vermin. And he's just like, oh, you stupid fuck. You know, like, you just... But I just want to say, yeah, who, so who, else, who else has a, has a has a crisp battle plan for when the zombies come, huh? I know, exactly. Which I mean, other that's candidate? Really, hmm? that, that's really what matters, Vern. I mean, you know, like, zombie power, I mean, the pony plan, I mean, it's fucking genius. Yeah. <laughs> like, what was that? What do you say? Free ponies for everybody? Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah but I, I've, I've actually had the pleasure of interviewing um, uh, Mr. Supreme on live on the air, actually. Yeah, oh, back in 2016. I, uh, awesome. I interviewed him at Liberty Forum um, right after I voted for him, pretty much. So, so as so as a libertarian, you didn't like Rand Paul. Um, so I had my own problems with uh, Mr. Paul, Senator Paul. Mm -hmm. um, basically, what the real big deal breaker was: um, one, he's nothing like his father, um, and two when he was pretty much asked directly about certain votes of his on drone policy and other, you know, miscellaneous foreign policy, his answer was basically, would you prefer boots on the ground in the Middle East or would you prefer we drone bomb people in the Middle East? And of course, the libertarian answer is, um, how about no? Mm -hmm. uh, but of his, his pragmatic view, it's, you know, if he's bombing people in God knows where, Yemen, mm -hmm. you know, wherever... Um, it, it's good as long as there aren't Americans there. Oh, okay, so yeah. so libertarians on the whole are very non-interventionist, yeah. sort of, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, so. that, that's that's well known, but yeah, I mean, it's deal, like, though. yeah, it, it's a big deal for me, certainly. I mean, the thing is, is like, you know, I domestic policy is a, a totally different animal, but when it comes to foreign policy, if you can't even remotely you know, get on board with that. I mean, there are going to be problems. I, I don't want to see, you know, more of Bush. I don't want to see more of Obama in that respect. I, I friggin' hate all the shit that's going on right now with the Korea, Korean Peninsula. I mean, like, it's just unnecessary escalation. You know, you, there's no need for it. So. Oh, God damn it. Third is back. I am, but I got to take a call. Okay. Oh, shit. Well... All right, so a, a, another random question I'm going to throw at you. Who, yeah. Who's your fa favorite president? All, oh, all Jesus. Um, I'm doing the whole, uh, the whole annoying standard interview question. Yeah, while I take the call. yeah no. Jeez. Um, I guess um, if I really had to pick, I'd probably say Jefferson. Uh, mm -hmm. That's probably because I've read more of his you know, writings than most other presidents. Um, I, I, if I had to pick a contemporary president, mm -hmm. um, perhaps, I don't know, it's, it's kind of an unorthodox choice, but I, I might say Kennedy um, for the simple reason that he's probably one of the last classically liberal presidents. Now, of course, there's the whole Kennedy family bullshit that, you know, you have to look past in order to say something like that mm -hmm. and the yeah. cronyism, but... 
um, you know, for what it's worth, for what they said, um, you know, you can't trust any politicians. I mean, I, I'm not even going to ask people to fucking trust me, mm. but, um, and, that, and know, that's why like, they can trust you. Right? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no I, I literally just, yes. Yeah, so like, about, um, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, keep, keep going. I, just trust me as if you would trust any other random person on the street. I mean, like, just because I hold an office doesn't make me any better or worse of a person. Actually, if anything, it probably makes me worse of a person. But, like, I, just by the nature of the job and its dirty, shitty work. I mean, legislating is is pretty awful, to be perfectly honest. I mean, you know, but... Um, no, I mean, I used, to make, I used to make concrete. Uh, embankments, so I'm gonna guess it's on par with that. Uh, yeah, it's 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 well, no, 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 it's it's not hard work. Let's put it this way: you can be a fucking <laughs> retard and be a legislator. Okay, you don't um, say. I, presumably, well, I mean, by the way, effective. Uh, kiss your re-election campaign goodbye, because you just use a very ableist slur. Oh no, I I don't uh, I don't remember who said this, but at one point somebody said. Um, yeah, uh, uh, an election's not an IQ test. Yeah, no, they're not. An election, <laughs> certainly not an IQ test. Um, <clears throat> it's a test of the feels. Well, yeah. we're rolling in. Uh, oh, do you have? Did you have something you want to say? Oh no, I was just going to go off on a tangent on uh, the Kennedy family. Don't go for it. Oh, no, well, I, well, we <laughs> yeah, uh, we're, we were talking Kennedy. about a you know favorite uh, contemporary presidents, and he said Kennedy. And uh, he mentioned the family, and the only reason I'm saying this is because uh, I'm I'm reading a book surrounding these events, and so I want to feel like oh, fun. You know, I can I can teach people something. I know a thing. Uh, uh, I, I think it was uh, JFK's father who was a, a, some type of ambassador to Churchill. Yep, great with FBI, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, yep, correct. And he was he was big into the uh, Chamberlain pro appeasement to the. To uh, the Nazi policy, right? Mm -hmm. To the Nazis' policy. Yes, mm -hmm. That was it. That's my fun fact that everybody fucking knows oh. already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm know. smart, fellas. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's been to the <laughs> I mean, a museum, and then he went on yeah. Wikipedia afterwards. Yeah, I, I've been the around Kennedy. the block a few times. Okay. <laughs> yeah, shit with the Kennedys really runs deep, though, man. I mean, P Papa Joe. Uh, he was more than just an ambassador. I mean, when he was in Boston city politics and all that shit, I mean, he, he ran the liquor market during prohibition. I mean, like oh, yeah, the yeah, underworld is real. Well, see, this is the it, thing is, I mean, my youth, my youth was, was largely spent as a more well, criminal. Um, yeah, and this is, you know, honestly, between the current state of things, the way things are run now, plus the way things have run, especially under the Kennedys, I'm kind of reminded that uh, this nation was kind of founded by criminals. Yeah, well, yep. depending on how you <laughs> define criminal in the sense. Yeah, of well, that's why, like, when I raise a few... Tra grand, traitors, my, maybe. <laughs> yeah, well, they were criminals, too. I mean, like, oh, uh, yeah. let's be honest, no, the Adams... Yeah, Sam Adams wasn't oh, yeah. just a brewer, okay? The motherfucker <laughs> yeah, was a fucking smuggler. smuggler. Yeah, he was a more notorious yeah. smuggler than Han Solo. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, so with that, uh, you know what? Let's. I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to see if anybody in the chat there wants to launch any questions at myself for whatever reason or for our, our wizened journalist cynic journalism cynic vernaculus or um the uh and this is something i haven't seen done on youtube too much an actual elected representative an actual politician any questions for any of them and of course if you yeah. throw a couple I, I will my way i'm a good capitalist i'll of course take your questions uh a bit quicker so <laughs> okay you know what let's get this out of the way i'm gonna start with the elected representative from uh, oh, um, are traps gay? Are what? <laughs> Sorry, say that again. Oh, God. Are traps gay? Gay. Ooh. What? I, I missed something. <laughs> are traps gay? Are traps. Yeah, are traps are gay? Are traps gay? You fuck? know what a trap is. Right? I, I must be missing. All right, I'm putting a stop to this right now. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm actually going to leave this to Vernaculus, one of the most intellectual and well-spoken YouTubers I know, <laughs> to explain to you. <laughs> Go do this shit. Uh, yeah, okay. Yes, we can do it, Vern. Uh, if, you're really you're going to make me do this on stream? Yeah, I'm going to make you fucking okay. do it. We're both going right. to make you do it. <sighs> All right, well, you see, a trap right, is a man who his 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 primary sexual characteristics are clearly male right but all of his secondary sexual characteristics are are uh, are, are are female presenting okay it's oh, a very oh, yes. convincing okay. tranny pre -op. it's a very convincing pre-op tranny who doesn't intend on transitioning who likes to seduce men as a sexy woman before dumping out that cock it's no, a chick no, it's, I, it's, it's, I, it's a chick with a dick yeah. yeah, no, I... I is, well, know, here's I the mean, thing, though. If you go... According fucking, to them, they're not gay. Well, no, 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 no. Think that our, is, is, are traps gay and is fucking traps gay? The question being because if you look at a trap, you see what on the surface looks like an attractive, willing female. No? But then you go... Yeah, and, I, I mean, I, like, I guess if, I guess if you're, you're fucking a, a, a man, I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty gay. But even if, like, even if your intention and your interest was to fuck a hot woman, <laughs> see, yeah, that's why it's the philosophical question of our age. I'll say for my I part, mean... <laughs> Lacey Green, Lacey Green, the, the important question. Yeah, no, it is important. Um, <laughs> no, Lacey Green honestly <laughs> gave the best you, answer I've ever if heard. If you were a man, <sighs> if you were a man, and you are fucking someone who's biologically a man, that's that's gay. It's gay. So it's gay. All right. So the elected representative from has said that uh, it's gay, which Burn. is fine. I mean, do what you want to fucking do. Like, oh no, you don't get to back out. You don't get to soft shoot backpedal on your bigotry, sir. That's not a backpedal. That's like this is this is really hard, hard, yeah, hard hitting hands. interview with a government yeah, official right. right now. Yeah, I know. It's all right. I I'm a product of the internet. All right. Does anybody have any real questions? Any any real questions? We we. We know that the libertarian thinks traps are gay, but if it's gay, then who cares? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> my, <Yeah>. my, <laughs> my favorite answer comes from the chat to this question. Uh, it is gay, but it doesn't make you a gay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. All right. Can, 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 all, right all right. We need to stop. We need to stop yeah. doing this. Uh, let's, favorite let's uh, Caleb, favorite economist. Favorite economist. Um, he's not so much an economist as he is just a thinker in general. But Bastia, um, Frederick Bastia. No. Was that a yeah. chuckle from the I mean, vernaculus just there? What? No, no, no. no oh, okay. Sorry, I'm, I thought you were like. <laughs> oh no 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 no. <laughs> uh, main policy concern. What was that? Main policy concern. M main policy concern. Um, state level or federal? I mean, I deal with state, so yours. Um, my, yeah, okay. Um, well, I'd say the. Um, I, I think there needs to be a plurality of of political opinion that's you know represented better than just by two parties. Um, so opening up ballot access to a plurality or, you know, actually uh, reforming voting laws in, in general. Um, so election how, reform. Yeah, yeah, just election reform in general. I mean, because you're never going to end up with an actual free marketplace of ideas without it. So um, I think that that is going to be really where the proverbial fight for, um, you know, kind of what we're talking about, kind of breaking down the identitarianism um, I think it's going to come in the way of election reform, um, and it's it's kind of unorthodox, and it, it seems like it it's something trivial, oh, and it's like oh, you're, I'm right. No, I'm right. You're just you're doing right. it because it's self serving. But um, it's it's more than just self serving. It's it really is much more important than a lot of people give it credit for. Um, I'm I'm really encouraged that up in Maine they passed uh, approval voting, and that the legislature didn't fucking. Um, stomp it out like they were threatening to. Um, you know, so it is a big thing, and it's certainly something that I'm going to be addressing, you know, 
during my time uh, remaining in the legislature. So. Vernaculus, what about you? What, main policy concern? Yeah, your biggest central policy concern, what is it? Uh, I think we need smarter foreign policy. What does that mean? It means... Stop appointing CEOs to be Secretary of State. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. I, don't, I, th- I think to, and this is just based off of you know my limited knowledge, but I, I think we need we need we need like an Eisenhower when it comes to foreign policy. Hmm. Trade with all. You t- I'm trying to say, like, um, uh, no, I mean, I like the sound of it, but if you want to destroy it, no, no, no I'm ahead. trying. I'm trying to figure out the right way to say this. I'm very slow. Yeah, um, I know. When yeah. it comes to <laughs> gotta take time and think about things, say them. What the fuck? Yeah. Do you? <laughs> well, no, in the sense that I think, um, uh, at least on the left and right, you know, foreign policy has either come down to, you know, strict isolationism, or we need to put our fingers in every pie on the planet. And I don't think that either of those are very smart. But, um, pretty much, like, uh, I have notes written down about this somewhere. Just forget I said anything <laughs> at this point. I need <laughs> to flesh this idea out. And be like, wait more. a second. No, my biggest policy concern is, uh, I need to flesh out my ideas a little bit more, right? You put me on the spot. <laughs> <All right. laughs> now, this is an interesting question, and it was directed at you, Caleb. It was, uh, end the war on drugs or the war, or, or end the welfare state first. Why do you have to pick? No, like, no first. I mean, first. No, no. If you if, if you had to do things in order, you get one. You get the, you get one thing to focus on first, and they can move on. Welfare state. Uh, definitely. Or war on drugs. No. Well, so no, no. Pick, pick the small battles first. A- ending the war on drugs is more politically popular than just ending the welfare state. I mean, as much as I would love to reduce the welfare state as well, politically, it's much less feasible. And as someone who has very little, if any, political capital, um. You know, I gotta pick and choose my battles. So certainly, ending the uh, the war on drugs takes precedent. And by and way, by ending the war on drugs, you reduce need for certain welfare. Um, you know, if you have um, that many people who are not going to prison, who are you know able to live slightly more productive lives, yeah, they might be drug addicts, but it's still a much more productive life than if you're in prison. Um, you know, like there is less of a need for for a lot of welfare spending so hmm. they, they kind of are interdependent but certainly ending the war on drugs all right all right why not theocracy because there is no god i'll answer that one real quick um let's see here can you edit this chirp with chatelet ah oh, you know this is what i love I, my, my, <laughs> My, now, my subscriber base oftentimes enjoys my content because it's not like... So let me tell you about this Twitter battle I had. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and then they're like, it's like, oh, it's such, a, it's such a relief from the mindless, banal shit you see trotted out as political insight. Thank you so much. No, 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 wait, I'm here relaxing my mind with intellectual content. Are traps gay? No, I mean, I want you to answer that. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, I got a five dollar uh, super chat from Goblin Unofficial. Have you seen the tweet from the New Mexico Republican GOP regarding Charlottesville yet, Nick or Vern? I haven't. No, I haven't. Mm-mm. So sorry, yeah. Goblin. Thank you for the five dollars, though. Benjamin G, two dollars. <laughs> Interracial porn will be Kekistan's uh, defense. We got plenty of defenses, namely, it's a meme that you don't own. So. <laughs> Here's what a black cock and a white ass looks like. Hey, man from Twitter. <laughs> so, we've been on, yeah, just over two hours now. Um, I'm going to leave it. I'm going uh, to wrap it up in classic format. Caleb, what, any, any, any final thoughts? Anything you want to leave the audience with? Um, if you are in the New England area and you are planning on going to uh, the rally on Saturday, stay safe. Um you know, don't, don't point me out. Yeah, don't don't fall for the identitarian bullshit. And um, yeah, pretty much it. I'm not giving myself any shameless plugs. I don't need it. 
it's not about shameless plugs. It's about an idea you'd like to leave people with. But if stay safe amidst crazy people, is that yeah. no? That that's, that's, that's the message. most important message. It's a good message. I could get behind that. Stay safe around crazy people, everyone. Yep. Pretty uh, fucking. Yeah. Now, Vern, um, I did put I'm putting you on the spot here, but not that hard because you got okay. to know that a spot was coming. Yeah. So come with that spot and give me what you got. Uh, stay safe. Go outside, and uh, there's always hope for reason. All right. Ten bucks. Last super chat was indeed a Stephen Wright line. Caleb, do you support the idea of defunding universities that push a social justice or cultural Marxism? Hmm. Um. Well, I mean, I I support defunding a lot of public universities without even that condition being <laughs> met. But um, aside from that, if you're trying to push some kind of ideological agenda and you're taking public money, or if you're preventing certain speakers from speaking and you're taking public money, um, yeah, you you should be defunded. You should have that public money re money revoked. So. Um, you know, we, we actually dealt with this. There was a, um, a representative, I believe, in my district oh, who introduced yeah. a bill, yeah, who no, introduced a bill on this very subject to turn, uh, to turn universities in New Hampshire, universities that accept public funds in New Hampshire, into free speech zones by default, um, which, you know, it's an interesting idea. Um, I, I voted for the bill, but, um, you know, it's, yeah, I, I do. So in... In short, I do so. Hmm. Well, all right then. So, hmm, we've got some good questions. That a good guess. This is a good stream. I'm pleased with this. This is good. Yeah. Now, Sar yeah, Sar Sar Sargon, I invited him. He did say he'd like to make it, but apparently he's hosting Alam Bakari for dinner tonight. So, yeah. I hope your oh, steak boy. is dry. I hope it's yeah. dry. There's live stream going on. <laughs> yeah. but, no, uh, I, I heard uh, I heard Sargon eats his steak well done. What was that? I, I, I missed said, something. Uh, I somebody... said I heard Sargon eats his steak well done. <laughs> this is why we fought hey, a war. Or... Yeah. This is why we fought a war. <laughs> is Fucking this the you, world Sargon. liberals want? <laughs> Where people eat fucking well done steak <laughs> with ketchup I, yeah with ketchup i bet uh, i didn't land on the I beaches have, of normandy oh, mitch real quick i have no idea who those people are so if they invite me to their podcast i'll if i'm free I'll, I'll talk on it that being the case though listen this has been a fucking hell of a stream this has been a good stream good stream not barely a single mention of youtube drama or any other <coughs> oh, there it is shit. there it is you mentioned it there it is well i said barely oh. Get the fuck off this stream, Nick. Yeah, I know. Get off your channel, bro. Yeah. Close just close shit down, bro. It's just you're just you're no better. You're no better. You're no better than the white YouTuber, bro. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> I say see it. You, I see well, you. But um, yeah. So it's a it's, nine out of ten stream. Yeah, it was it was yeah. an eight eight point five out of nine hundred. Um. <laughs> well, yeah, it's because it's because you guys are so fucking awesome. I mean, no, my, I'm... my presence didn't. didn't oh, do okay. Anything. No, I'll be honest. I've been, been kind of like keeping an eye on the chat here and there. And uh, for those of you who are begging attention, I am sorry, but this was a conversation. I can't go giving attention to everyone. But, 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 yeah. uh, people here did seem to actually enjoy your uh, contributions. I did too. I know I did. Oh, been... I mean, yeah, me so I'm awesome. Amazing. Did you hear me flounder on that foreign policy question? <laughs> 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 you got you, you got you got an edge on hey, me, listen, listen, you oh. guys don't understand but you basically are the thinkers that i look to and you know you guys were talking earlier about who are the thinkers and i don't think you guys give yourself enough credit justin really are we doomed i think we're doomed I, I, <laughs> don't, don't say that nick it's, because it's, it's a possibility <laughs> No, no, for real. I, I respect yeah. the hell out of you guys. I really do. And, um, you know, I mean, well, you, yeah, you know, I, I didn't know. Uh, and, and we, you. Yeah, yeah keep this in mind as, oh, well, as, we, as we close this out. And we're going we're gonna to hang out for a bit and after chat as usual. But uh, keep this in mind as, uh, you know, uh, we're just, we, we just talk a bunch of shit on the internet. You actually like, went oh, I know. Here. You went and got yourself elected to office. So you're right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I'd, I'd, I'd class that. I'd class that, and that's a big reason that I'm going to be doing it next year. But I'd class that as doing more to, to advance 
good ideas in the face of an onslaught of shit ideas in a society that seems hell bent on making shit ideas the soup du jour um, than talking shit on the Nick, internet. What, you, what you fail to realize is that I reach probably a couple hundred people. You reach significantly more than that. And is it more important for someone to be sitting in a public office you know, banging their head against the wall, basically getting very little, if anything, done because you have two monolithic fucking political parties standing in your way? Or is it more important to speak directly to people to, you know, deliver a message of, you know, individualism, classical liberalism, you know, non-identitarianism? Um, and I, I think what you are doing is much more valuable in that respect. So, um, you know, yes, well, I, mean I have a public office to deliver it from, but... I'm part of an institution that has very little respect, if any, anymore. You know, you're part of the YouTube community for what it's worth, the community. Um, I don't respect that community, don't worry. Yeah, but I mean, it's still, it is much more influential than what I have. So um, that's why I respect the hell out of you guys. And I, I think that you do a better job than I could ever hope to do. Well, you know what? And, um, uh, well, on that note, though, I mean, expect invites to future live streams. Okay, there, Mister. I'm so humble. Okay, like, oh, I'm just a humble <laughs> public servant. Oh, <laughs> expect. Yeah. No, you're gonna. No, you're gonna. No, you you'll get dragged into more of these. Don't worry. Oh I, fuck. I, yeah, I mean, honestly, I I mean, I need to, I need to, I need to squeeze that 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 sweet sweet super chat put, uh uh flashlight. Yeah, is, you put bread in the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, here's the thing: YouTube channels—they're basically intellectual fleshlights. That's what they are. Yep, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> I like. I like that. I do too. That was I'm great. Glad I came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm All right. Sorry. guys. On that note, yeah, I, I, think, I, that I, I think we're good. Okay. That is okay. a I, I, perfect I think, note. I think the stream's done. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the, uh, how do you how do you top that? You I, leave on I a, know. Leave on a high note. Yeah, I, so, I never, I never, I never top my flashlight. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, well, here's the thing: once YouTube demonetizes this stream as a video, I'll rename it "Political Flashlight." Okay. So yeah. until then, though, uh, all of you cunts have a good night. Stay safe. If you see me in Boston, don't point me out in public. I'm yeah, that's a bad fucking, fucking idea. Curious about that? Do not point me out in public. But do watch my channel. Uh, probably Vernat gives us too, because uh, I'll be streaming. Hopefully not in um, Lego block form, like in like at VidCon. But um, yeah, you will see some live streams. You will see some videos, and you will definitely see some interesting insights coming out of whatever fucking shit show we've got going down in the Bay State on Saturday. So until then, be safe. Go fuck yourselves. Get out of my living room. I don't. I guess still got to work on this outro. So bye.